Thank you so much, TJ. We will call this work uh, session to order. Today is Monday, June 15th, um, 2020. It is 10.03. We will uh, begin our work session. But before we start this morning, we have a special presentation from the mayor of Douglasville. Rochelle Robinson is here. And then we will proceed with our meeting. Um, mayor Robinson, good morning. Yes, good morning. How are you? Oh, great. And you, thank you for being here. Oh, you're welcome. I want to congratulate you and Commissioner Kelly Robinson on securing another um, rotation, another time for being elected. Congratulations. We're very proud of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Board of Commissioners. I really appreciate this honor. I have a letter here from myself in the City Council, and it reads to Mr. Mark Till, County Administrator, Douglas County Courthouse. Dear Mr. Till, we wish to congratulate you on receiving the Jerry R. Griffin Excellence in Public Service Award. This is a monumental accomplishment for, your, for you personally and a milestone for your career and is a well-deserved honor. This award has affirmed something that we have known for quite some time, that you are a great leader and an asset to our community and an even better person. I have cherished working alongside such a wonderful and committed community partner. Again, congratulations on this accomplishment. We look forward to continuing our harmonious and fruitful partnership to create an even better Douglasville, Douglas County, community for years to come. Respectfully yours, Rochelle Robinson, Mayor of the City of Douglasville, Mayor Pro Tem Terry Miller, Councilmember Mark Adams, Councilmember Dr. LaShawn Verdanley, Councilmember Samuel Davis, Councilmember Howard Estes, Councilmember Nicole Miller, and Councilmember Chris the Coach Watts. Congratulations, uh, Commissioner, and thank you so much, and congratulations, uh, County Administrator, you are awesome. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Mayor Robinson. And um, we could just, if we could, if, if we could stand another round of applause for our county administrator as we continue to celebrate his success. Our board of commissioners, if you could just give a clap, a clap and also our directors that's on the line. If we could... Thank you so much this morning. Um, thank you so much, uh, Mayor Robinson, for coming out this morning to to impart or share this um, this special accommodation for our county administrator. You are correct. He is uh, he is he's definitely the wind beneath my wings, and I know the uh, board of commissioners would echo me as well. So thank you so much for being here, and you're welcome to stay if you would like for our meeting. Madam Chair. Uh, yes. Madam Chair, I just like to extend a special thanks to the mayor and the. Uh, City Council, this is a great honor coming from them, and I look forward to working with them and uh, the Mayor and Council and their staff in the future as well, and I don't see why we can't continue this relationship. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Mr. Hill. All right. Thank you so much. Congratulations again. Uh, Board of Commissioners, uh, again, and also the citizens of Douglas County who are joining us this morning, thank you for being here. Board of Commissioners, today uh, certainly we are not able to take any comment, uh, public comment, but however, I am encouraging our citizens to email your district commissioner or either call Mark Teal or our county administrator or send myself an email or you're welcome to call me. Uh, with that being said, we have a pretty robust uh, agenda this morning and what I'm going to do is we have a SPLOSS presentation, but before I start the SPLOSS presentation, I just want to briefly just go over some of the uh, the items on the agenda, and then we'll uh, spin back to the SPLOST presentation. Uh, Board of Commissioners, be prepared tomorrow to approve our minutes. We have our commission our meeting minutes, work session minutes, and our executive session minutes. And I ask that you take time to just uh, briefly look those minutes over, or to review those minutes, and then be prepared to approve or uh, reject accordingly. Uh, County Administrator has some business, and I must, I'll uh, go with tab number four, five, and six, and then we will pivot back to our SPLOST presentation. County Administrator has uh, authorization to allocate additional 2016 SPLOST funds in the amount of $22,380.64 for streetlights on the I-20 ramps at Chapel Hill Road, Highway 5, and Lee Road due to GDOT requirements. County Administrator, you want to chime in? 
Yes, um, yes, ma'am. Due to GDOT, Georgia DOT requirements through the permitting process. Um, so for Highway 5, there was a decrease of uh, approximately $3,000. Uh, Chapel Hill Road, there was an increase in the in the cost of construction of the streetlights in the amount of $24,338. And Lee Road was an increase of uh, around $1,100. So the total increase for the streetlights on I-20 is $22,380.64. Um, with these additional costs, we are still at approximately uh, 384,000 for the total project for streetlights. Uh, that includes I-20 and the various streets around the county. So we're still well under the 500,000 that was allocated through SPLOST. Okay, thank you so much, County Administrator. Board of Commissioners, are there any questions? And I, I wanna remind you, Board of Commissioners, if we could limit our comments this morning to at least three minutes, and if you had a rebuttal five, I mean, uh, two minutes, if you give you a total of five, we have a very tight, robust schedule this uh, today or agenda. Any questions or comments from the Board of Commissioners before I move on to tab number six? I mean, tab number five. Okay, I'll move on to tab number five, authorization to accept a grant from the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council for Felony Drug Court for the 2021 budget year and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Uh, Tim Pruitt, are you there? Good morning. I am here. How's everybody doing this morning? Oh, doing well. Very good. Um, this is our, as I call it in years past, bread and butter grant. This is the money that we typically receive from the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council. We are reduced this year, which is not surprised based on the current financial situation of the state. Um, as a matter of fact, I've just been able to finally get the numbers together. We don't even have the award packet here in the building yet, but we're looking at $549,458 in grant money coming to Superior Court for continued accountability court operations. Um, that is a very strong number. I imagine the state could come back at some point in the future and present to us uh, a budget reduction on top of that, but um, that's the number for now, and I'm open for questions if you need them. Okay, thank you so much. Any questions for uh, Tim Pruitt, Board of Commissioners? We have any questions for him this morning? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, Vice Chairman Robinson, please. Uh, um, th thank you, Madam Chair. Um, good morning, Tim. Quick, quick question. Um, so this is for fiscal year 2020, 2021. Did I hear that right? That's correct, sir. Okay. All right, 2021. And you sort of floated that perhaps the state may come back with a uh, with an impact on us, uh, meaning our felony drug court. Is that inclusive of the 14% that's already been stated publicly? Or, I mean, I'm trying to get a feel of what you're saying. That they're going to so, add 550 now and then they're going to take it away? Talk to Talk to uh, that's exactly correct. I believe that we are looking at an additional percentage reduction. If the state is reduced by 14%, I would expect for this award amount to be reduced by 14%. There is conversation that it might only be 11. To be perfectly honest, it's conjecture. I can't tell you what that reduction is going to be. Um, I even went to our grant specialist at CJCC and said, how should I proceed how can I be transparent with my board and with my public telling them you, you're telling me that this money is coming, but that there will be a reduction, but I can't tell them what that reduction is. And CJCC's response was that's absolutely correct. You, you can't tell them what it is because we don't know the legislature's just now back in session. And until there's an approved state budget, the money from the state can't be finalized for the accountability courts. So we are uh, in a state of flux right now. We know what our best case scenario could be. And as those updates come, I will let the county know these are the changes that are happening to our budgets as they are officially made. Right now we have nothing official other than the actual award amount is official. They have made that official to me, but they also sent a letter saying understand that a state budget reduction will reduce your award amount 
of an unknown number. Okay, all right. I, and I respectfully understand that. That's why it's important to have data to make decisions. You need data, you need input. Um, and so I, I appreciate what you're saying. We've got a finance committee later today. We're, we're likewise in our own situation in trying to understand, okay, well, we're responsible for all of it all across the whole board and see what the impacts are accordingly. I'm going to move beyond that. Duly noted, we'll come back 30 days from now. We'll probably be in a, another state of being. Obviously, hopefully the state's budget will be approved uh, and obviously we'll be in a different place as well. So we can give ourselves 30 days. It, this wasn't holding you um, to a fire or anything. Just asking a, a general question. All right, I got one more question. Um, and again, it goes both ways. Man, I'm sure it wants us to keep our questions short, but also likewise, y'all got to be tight on your response. Oh, right. My question has to do with uh, how are the accountability courts doing right now in light of the pandemic, in light of, in light of what is reality? What is reality? And that's an open that's statement. Open. Answer however you want. I'm happy, I'm happy to happy report, report that, the that the accountability courts were prepared. Were prepared. Um, uh, they were prepared, they were prepared for, for, for not necessarily not COVID-19, COVID but for but operations that might not continue in our normal procedures. procedures. We were able to modify those plans, plans for COVID-19 to the point that I think it's important that the public and the board realize that we did not miss a single court day. Every court day that has been scheduled has been kept. We have not missed a single hour of treatment. Uh, we, we deploy, deploy provide, provide uh, deliver, deliver, whatever word deliver, you would like, like dozens of hours of treatment every treatment week. week. And, and the, the Saturday, Saturday where the judicial executive order came, came out, or the judicial order of emergency came out on top of the executive order, uh, suspending, uh, suspending a lot of court services, services, we moved to a virtual format. We were ready. So, so it has it absolutely impacted, impacted some of our operations. We are doing some things less. We are doing some things in a different way. Uh, surveillance in the community is a different animal right now than it used to be uh, because we are trying to keep the surveillance officers healthy and the participants healthy. Um, we are making plans for how we phase in uh, in-person services and keep people engaged in the accountability courts at a high level. Uh, we are still providing sanctions and incentives as the accountability court model calls for. Uh, so I'll try to be brief and just say that I, I think that we have a lot to be proud of in Douglas County because there are dozens, if not hundreds of courts across the nation that absolutely shut down services and did not continue to operate. And that's not the case for Douglas County. We continue to operate we modified, and we missed a single hour of treatment. I got it. That's sufficient of Tim. Our, my, my time allotment has um, pretty much come to an end, but that is sufficient. Thank you. And I'm sure I yield the floor. Okay, thank you so much. I'm going to move on if, if there are another, no other comments from the Board of Commissioners. First of all, uh, let me go just before I only see two Board of Commissioners. I will have seen Commissioner Robinson and I've seen Commissioner Guider, Commissioner Carthen, and Commissioner uh, Mitchell. Are you on the on here? President accounted for. Yes. Okay. I just want to yes. make sure I did. Yes, yeah, so many people on this morning. I just want to ensure I wasn't just proceeding without acknowledging all the commissioners being on board. Okay, we're gonna move on to tab number six is approval of an anticipated grant award for the misdemeanor state court DUI drug court program from the CJJ in the attentive amount, tentative amount of $95,754 for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2020 and ending July 30th, 2021 and have the chairman to sign all related documents. Are you on um, Mrs. Granger? Ms. Anita Granger? Hmm. I thought I saw her. Uh, Mark Teal is, is Ms. Granger. I saw her come in. But if not, we'll move on to the next one and, and maybe she'll come back in a second. Okay. No, ma'am, I did not see her on the, on the list. Okay. She was invited, but I don't see that she's on at this time. Is it anyone on here that can respond to? I see she's waiting in the lobby, AG. Yeah, she's on now. Okay. Ms. Granger, I just um, 
I'm on tab number six, which is your uh, anticipated grant of the misdemeanor uh, state court DUI drug uh, court program for CJJ. Uh, can you elaborate for the Board of Commissioners? Yes, ma'am. Can you uh, hold on a second? I'm sorry. I've been having a heck of a time getting into this meeting this morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I don't know what my laptop has been like goofy. So I'm on my phone. So forgive me. I'm not, I, I'm apparently having technical difficulties. Is today Monday? It must be. So the um, anticipated amount of our grant is listed on the agenda. And that amount um, is going to be subject to whatever the uh, budget that the state passes at the end of this month. So it could drop by as much as 14% is what I'm told, but it will not be more than that amount I've listed on the agenda. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, any questions from the board or, or comments regarding this grant? I believe there is it, it really echoes. Yeah, there is a 10% match. Okay, 10% match. Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. And I believe it really echoes similar with just uh, uh, Tim Pruitt yeah. just here with us as well, the same grant, um, because it's based on, it's contingent on uh, the final results of the state's budget. Thank you so much, um, Mrs. Granger, this morning. We're going to move on tab number seven, authorization to amend the budget and accept a grant award in the amount of $48,996 from the Council of Accountability Court Judges for the Family Treatment Court and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director King. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Same as the two before me. This is our state award. I'm sorry, the sound is coming back to me. Um, our amount is $48,996. And that is prior to any cut that may come down the line. Okay. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners or concerns? All right, thank you so much, um, Ms. King. And what I'm doing, Board of Commissions, I'm just going to go on all the way to tab number nine. That, that take care of, that, that will address all our grants this morning. We have two grants left. Madam, Madam Chair. From Madam, Madam Chair. Uh, could we get yes. the uh, yes. department heads? Uh, we get the, um, to tell us whether or not there's a 10% grant, um, uh, a match, and what's in their budget, budget. As, as we go down. Okay. As, as we go down. okay. I'll just look at that. Sound. <laughs> I know. Miss Miss King, uh, Jennifer King, can you share with us? Is, is there a uh, match required with your grant? Yes, ma'am, yes, there ma is. What is it? Is it a 10%? What, what percentage? It is 10%. Is okay. All right. Thank you. I hope that answers your question, Commissioner Guyer. Was it budgeted? Was it a budget? Was, your, was this 10% budgeted? Yes. 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 Thank you. Okay. okay. Yeah. Typically, with hey, these guys. Yes, um, Commissioner Mitchell. You might want to ask those who are not speaking to actually mute their speakers because I think we have a lot of feedback. So if you're not, you're not, you know, speaking or, or something is going on the the audio. So just FYI. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. I couldn't hear, it, but on my end. But uh, please, uh, if you if you're not speaking, please turn your mics off at this time. And then uh, as I call your name, please uh, proceed with turning them back on because they've uh, just given us a lot of feedback and noise and uh, background noise. All right, we have two grants left this morning, which is always good news with grants. Tab number eight is authorization to accept the Bureau of Justice Assistance FY20 Coronavirus Emergency Supplemental Funding Grant in the amount of $52,901 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Uh, Director Stanley, Tiffany Stewart Stanley. Good morning, Chairman Jones, Board of Commissioners, and uh, the Administrator Marks. This grant um, being provided by the Bureau of Justice Assistance uh, to provide personal protective equipment for county government law enforcement operations in each other county. Uh, we were awarded $52,901 um, for the grant. There is no cash. Okay. Board of Commissioners, did you hear um, Director Stanley? Because it looked like she was a little choppy with the with the response, but did you hear it? I hope all Board of Commissioners heard. If there are no questions, thank you so much, um, 
this is exciting. Is there a match required for this grant or anything? No, and no, I mean, no. This is straight, okay, straightforward. Mm -hmm. We're gonna move on to tab number nine, authorization to accept the Keep America Beautiful CLPP grant in the amount of $20,000 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents and amend the budget. Uh, Tiffany Stewart Stanley, Director Stanley. Your mic is not on. Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, this is okay. just a continuation. Uh, we were awarded uh, $10,000 last year, and this year we're being awarded $20,000 uh, for our cigarette litter prevention program. And this is to raise public awareness for those who do choose to smoke, you know, how to properly dispose of their cigarettes. Uh, we were awarded $20,000 plus another $1,500 in portable ashtrays and pocket ashtrays. And so there is no match, and we are just asking that this grant be accepted. Okay. Thank you so much. Board of Commissioners, you heard this grant is for the cigarette litter program and also to allow those who smoke to dispose of their um, cigarette butts in a very uh, gracious manner and not throw them on the ground, and they have like a personal pocket ashtray. So um, any questions regarding this grant? Pretty self-explanatory, straightforward. So thank you so much, Director Stanley. Thank you. All right, I'm going to pivot back to our uh, presentation for the SPLOSH update. And TJ, for some reason, look like we're getting a lot of, we, I'm hearing a lot of background noise this morning. And I believe everyone has their uh, mics muted at this time. Okay, we have our SPLOSH update. Uh, Mr. Terry Gable, would you please proceed? And thank you for being here this morning with us. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, uh, members of the board. It's Terry Gable with Atlas, and I'm going to give a quick update on the SPLOST program. Uh, hopefully, everybody can hear me, and I hope everybody's doing well this morning. So I'm, um, I've got a presentation. I'm going to share it uh, with everyone, so I'll just go through it as we normally do. Um, get it started here. Okay, so with uh, no further ado, I'll go ahead and move through it. I know we, we got a tight schedule. Uh, Madam Chair, we, if we have time, David Good does have a few slides at the end for a vendor update, uh, but I'll finish the, the project update and, and you can let, let us know if, uh, if we have time for that. Okay. Um, so moving forward, the, um, we have just uh, crested the uh, $40 million mark for the total uh, amount of funds that have been invoiced out of the program for the since the beginning of the program. Uh, we still have some invoices uh, in the pipeline, so it's I'm sure it's Mr. a little Gabe, I, Yes, ma'am. Mr. Gabe, I hate to you, but your PowerPoint is not on the screen. Do you? It's not. Mm, no, it's not showing. I just don't want you to. Be no, we, we, we actually see it, Madam Chair. It is on the screen. You see it? Okay. Yeah, we see it. I see it. I see it too. Okay, well, proceed. I'm the only one that I can listen. Keep going. So keep going? Yes, please. Please proceed. Okay. I apologize. I can't see it. <clears throat> um, okay, so we're, we're talking about the revenues. There was $40 million has been invoiced since the beginning of the program. Uh, and just breaking that down by each program, we're at $19.3 million currently for the fire department. Uh, $14.2 million for transportation and uh, just a little over $4 million for parks and recs. Mm -hmm. the, the revenues, uh, I'll be reporting on the April revenues uh, and then the work through May. Um, keeping in mind this month or April was the beginning of year four, our first month. So We'll, we'll gradually do that and see how the pandemic affects us. But we had a pleasant surprise with April um, and the revenues came in just about uh, dead on um, the projections at two million and thirty two thousand uh, dollars. We were just under about twenty five thousand dollars from pro from projection. So it was a good month considering the, the situation we're in and we'll, we'll move forward with that with a, a positive attitude and just looking at the graph. Well, uh, back to uh, April of last year, uh, you know, the flat line is the projections. You can see we had a good year, good solid year in 
in all of uh, last year three, we had a couple spikes and and obviously the one in December that really helped us out. But since January, it's 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 been hitting right on the line of the projections uh, with this last one in April. So we'll continue with that and uh, and keep we're keeping a very close eye on it, obviously, uh, and then we'll make whatever adjustments we need to make as we move through the program. Um, the total uh, splash revenues. Uh, for years one, two, three, in the beginning of four, is $77.8 million. If you can compare that to the total projections, we're still right at $3.2 million that we over uh, the revenues over what was projected. So we still got a solid, a solid number there as we move into the um, splash year four. Uh, to update us real quick on where we're at with the, the bond obligation, uh, we are going into year four, which is the fourth payment that we'll be uh, striving for here. The first payment will be made October 1st of 2020 of $509,000. The second payment as we've done in the past will be made April 1st, 2021. It's $16.8 million for a total of $17.3 million for year four payment. Um, at the beginning, the total payment was $69.1 million. And as we enter into year four, the balance on the bond due is $21.6 million. So we're slowly chipping away at it. And after year four, it's one small payment left compared to the other payments. So with that, we'll go into some quick project updates. Uh, the countywide digital radio system, as we've reported, um, is in the final stages of it. Um, Motorola is um, making some, uh, some last minute additions with the BDA, the bi-directional antenna, in the jail that's being installed. Uh, we have some miscellaneous equipment that uh, that they're bringing in also with sirens, which are weather warnings and some headsets for the fire truck. Um, so the, the pandemic in itself has started affecting and we're seeing it in some other sectors of the, of the industry, uh, equipment and material. So things are starting to slow down. And I think they, they, they had some, um, some issues with getting some of this this equipment in so but everything is going well i think the chief has been chief has been very pleased with the the overall testing for the the, the system uh and with, again we look forward to wrapping this up um at the end of uh, june and it may go into july because of the of the pandemic and, and getting some of this equipment in well, again we are in the final stages of it and hopefully we'll be there uh here shortly and then we'll make a final acceptance and close that project out uh, ambulance procurement for 2020. We have two that are on the uh, on the books for 2020. Uh, the chief is going well, is moving forward with uh, advertising for one ambulance at this point. We're just again being cautious about what we're uh, about moving into this year with the pandemic. Uh, but they'll go ahead and get that advertised for one ambulance uh, for this year uh, and get that uh, get that on the street. Uh, fire truck uh, procurement for 2019. I've got that in here. We just took delivery of it in May uh, and, and and made the, the payment in late May, but I did want to show a picture of it. This is a new piece of equipment that's added to the Chief's fleet. I'm sure he's very proud of that um, and, um, and we'll take full advantage of it, but they do have it and it is in service now. So we are in the process of uh, the chief had one more fire truck for 2020 that was in his in his program. Uh, it's been approved by the board and we've selected a vendor for it. We're just working through he and Scott are working through the final uh, stages of the paperwork to give the uh, the vendor a notice to proceed. It's going to take approximately a year to, to fabricate the, the fire truck and we'll give you reports as um, as we go through through let me get my as we go through the um through the year staff vehicles the chief um had two vehicles that he had uh has been put put out for order it's two f uh 50s uh they should be delivered this fall so we'll we'll keep a track on that don't don't anticipate any issues with with the pickup trucks and last uh, on the chief's list of projects is is uh, station 11. If you remember, this is the project where it's primarily site improvements. 
uh, in sewer uh, sewer system improvements for the chief. It's to, to redo the parking lot, make better access for the fire truck coming in from the back off 92. Um, and we are in the preliminary desi design stages of it. At this point, just trying to work with um, the various departments, uh, including GDOT, since it's on 92, and trying to make some determinations on what uh, what's the best sewer system for the fire station. And it, it's, ha it's having a big impact on it with the improvements that we're trying to make. But we're working through that, and we'll be working with the chief and GDOT and the various NWSA to make some final decisions on that. So with that, uh, everything is moving quite well with the fire department, and we'll uh, we'll move into into transportation. Uh, I'm sure you probably glanced at your agendas. Miguel has several things on the um, on the agenda that he'll be going into detail. Well, he'll be going into more detail as he presents them, and I'll just give a brief uh, overcap of of where, what's affecting each project. Uh, so for the 2020 resurfacing. Uh, we're, we need to get this project underway. Um, on the agenda is, is the board's approval, consider approval for Baldwin um, paving for um, for the uh, milling and res, uh, the milling and, and patching for the resurfacing this year. And if you remember that 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 piece of the resurfacing program this year is being contracted out, uh, the milling and the patching and the uh, the Douglas County's maintenance forces will be doing the resurfacing. So we'll get that underway um, once that's approved, and we'll uh, we'll move forward with and get the 2020 resurfacing started this year. The Stewart Mill Road project, if you remember, is it's is in the 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 uh, right of way phase. Um, Miguel has got all the options out uh, to the various property owners, um, and he we're, he is still waiting on responses to come back. Uh, and trying to be a little bit patient with them, considering the pandemic and the, again the situation we're in. So we're, we're needing those to come back from the property owners, and he'll move forward with with acquisition of. Uh, hey, of Terry. Park. Yes. Uh, we don't see your presentation. You don't see it now. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. hmm. Just try to see where we're at. How about that? Yes, I see it. Yes, I see it. Okay. Thank you, David. You're welcome. All right, so um, if everybody's good, you can see it, we'll move forward. So Stuart Mill Road, again, is in the right of way phase. Uh, Bright Star at John West um, has been was approved by the board last month. The contractor for construction. We had a Miguel and him had a pre-construction meeting on Friday. They've given the contractor a notice to proceed. So this project uh, will be our second intersection project under the SPLOS program that will be under construction this this year. Some good news there, Sweetwater Church. At Doris Road is has been under construction, is on schedule right now. Uh, no issues there. It's been moving a little bit slow. Um, just trying to get the utilities out of the way. And again, uh, if, that's a pretty tight intersection, but no problems in the projects. The, the, like I said, the project's on schedule and moving forward. Chapel Hill Road uh, is in the design phase, this is another project that's on your agenda that Miguel will be bringing to you. Um, there's been this discussions back and forth about moving that footprint for that project to a five lane with a flush median. And that decision has come out of transportation committee and will be is being presented to the board. Uh, it, it's requiring some additional uh, uh, design work by SEI. So there'll be a, a, a um, it's an item on there for a supplemental agreement for additional design costs to do the um, uh, the additional design work for the five lane and for the extension of the terminal. So that's good news. Uh, that that's been uh, it was an important part of that project um, and a good move by the board to get us to this point. But uh, we need to get the designer back on track uh, once we move past this point if it's approved. 
and get the SDI back on back on track. Highway five is uh, is still in the design phase and moving forward. Uh, Miguel and him were able to work out an agreement with the uh, with the uh, developer on the amount of right of way that's needed. Um, so we're we're full steam ahead now with the with the uh, with the design plans and look forward to moving into the right of way phase once that gets completed and we get a solid footprint for the uh, for the right turn lane on Highway Five. Coast Road Bridge at Dog River. Um, no updates from GDOT. We, we fully anticipate the contractors on schedule and will be in Douglas County as we've reported in the past uh, this fall. Uh, hopefully as we, we move closer to that time frame, we'll start getting some more accurate updates from the contractor and we'll we'll start uh, giving you more specific dates on when he's gonna move in and, and the time frame of the project. And moving on to our sidewalk projects, again, we've got a few of these on the uh, on the agenda. The first first one is Lithia Springs Elementary School. On the uh, on the agenda for the board to uh, review and approve is uh, the Corbett Group uh, for the contractor of three hundred sixty three thousand dollars for the construction of the of the sidewalk over in Lithia Springs. And then the same thing with Chestnut Log Middle School uh, Prime Foundations. Uh, was a low bid and it's on the, uh, the agenda for approval at $275,000 uh, roughly to uh, to get this project under construction this summer. And we, I'm sure all of us are looking forward to getting some sidewalk projects out there on the ground. And then uh, lastly with the, uh, the sidewalk projects is the new Manchester High School. Another item on the agenda, um, the uh, Miguel is Finally got to go ahead from GDOT for the speed reduction on 92, but the first phase of that would be a public hearing and that's what you'll see on your agenda uh, for the board to give him the, the authorization to move forward with that. The speed reduction will allow us to complete the design for this for this project and to provide a pro pro protected crosswalk on 92, uh, make it a much safer environment for the pedestrians out there and be able to safely cross 92. Um, but it, and that also the another big important part of it is it'll it kicks us back into the design phase, and um, SEI can complete the design on it, which is about 90% done. But it'll be wrapping up the final plans and, and getting the final permit from GDOT. Whitestone culvert uh, has been delayed. It, it, we've kind of kept you abreast of this. Uh, there was a, a design change in the footing, and which resulted in a dig duct so that was that was well worth the time it's taken um, and that is also on the agenda as a change order for uh, Cor the Corbett group uh, in a reduction of around $123,000 from the uh, original contract price and again once we get this approved and get it get the uh, paperwork executed we will uh, be able to allow the contract to get back to work um, and finish the culvert out there. The street lights, uh, we've got those in two phases. Uh, Mark just addressed the, the phase one uh, that finally got, and we're working towards getting all everything approved uh, that, that GDOT required on the plans. Uh, and once we get that approved for the cost adjustment, we'll get that, hopefully get that project started in phase one, and, and we'll be moving into phase two with the uh, various intersections and road segments around the county. Highway 92 at Riverside Parkway. If you remember this project, we, we've got um, design approval to do some studies at this intersection and Anawake, but Miguel has been working with, um, with GDOT and they are um, looking at doing a, another quick response as they did at Mount Vernon uh, to go in and, and just install a traffic signal, which uh, that would be super, it'll, um, It'll help our budget, and if they do what they did at uh, Mount Vernon, they cover the cost on it. So that's um, we're waiting, waiting now very patiently to get a final decision from them to see if they're going to put a signal here, 
and then Miguel can move forward with what what he needs to do to finalize uh, that that corridor through those three intersections. And moving on to our big project, Lee Road widening project. Um, last month, uh, moving into June, GDOT, Miguel's finally gotten a, uh, approval from GDOT on the on the funds to go ahead and advertise this project. So we really right on schedule where uh, Miguel thought we would be is getting the project out in June uh, for construction. So we're looking forward to that. He's got some task orders that he's looking at and trying to get everything set up and geared up to put this project under construction and get it uh, get it going this summer. So we'll have a, a very robust construction season for transportation if we can get all this this underway, uh, which it looks like we will um, this summer through the rest of the year. And then finally with the uh, Miguel's projects, Maxim Road sidewalk, um, from the GDOT project up to the county line is moving along uh, with no issues. The, Miguel reported that they're, um, they're far along with the design. So hopefully this will be another project. There's no right of way involved in it unless that has changed since our last report. Um, so this project will um, have a good chance of getting uh, getting final plans and, and getting, getting it out to bid this year also. So we could hopefully end up with all four sidewalk projects under construction this year, and typically that you know they're not not that long of of a project, so that uh, we can see them see them all completed. Okay, with that, I'll um, I'll move into uh, the parks program, starting with Deer Lick Park. Uh, tennis courts integrated construction has this project they are moving along we're, we're on schedule and within budget um, at this point in time we're trying to get the lights in and you remember we are dealing with with a lot of rock out there so we're working through that with the contractor but again we're on we're on schedule and moving forward with it uh, we get the lights up and then they can the buildings are already up and then they can start with the courts and we can actually start seeing some tennis courts uh, go in on that project. The multi-purpose rec center, it was a little slow out of the, uh, out of the gate, uh, but they have finally got that project out of the uh, um, the subgrade that we struggled with at the beginning of the year, or beginning of the project. And they poured uh, footing foundations last week and should be uh, this week prepping the uh, for the building slabs. So finally getting this project up and start seeing some vertical st structure go up. Uh, hopefully uh, after this week or next week, but it's on schedule and on budget right now. Uh, the Senior Center at Lithia Springs uh, can only say good things with this project. They heavily con construction out in unit has really done a good job in keeping the subs uh, very busy. Um, we you can see it's primarily dried in. They're waiting on the brick to come in this week. Uh, sheet rock is going up inside and the next thing uh, they'll get it bricked and they'll start installing the windows. So th to this point, again, this, this project has gone very well. Uh, it's certainly on schedule and, 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 and within budget um, and it's really looking good and, and I think it's going to really be pretty and it'll be a big ass asset for the county uh, once we get it, we get it completed. And then um, finally the, the bill art project, the concession building. This was paired up with Fair Play. It was two concession buildings in one contract. Um, this was our groundbreaking that we did last month. That This particular one is that Bill Art. And you can see the foundation of that building was just in last month. Um, it's, it's obviously changed since that time. And then the Fair Play concession building that's in that same contract, the building's up. Uh, you got a good ways to go with it, but they got the structure up. Uh, and we'll have it up. It will also be up at Bill Art probably within a couple of weeks uh, to start finishing out that project. Uh, Madam Chair, with that, um, I'll open it up for questions. Uh, but David, David, David does have a few slides uh, that he'd like to go through real quick if that's if that is um, if time allows. Yes, Tom, time will permit. I would love for David to proceed, and then at the end, I will allow the uh, ask the board commissioners to proceed with their questions. Mr. Okay. Good. 
Uh, yes, um, good morning. Uh, this is David Good, Spots Communications Director. Uh, good morning to you, Madam Chair, District Commissioners, stakeholders, citizens of Douglas County, and uh, business owners. As you can see, we have about 114 uh, vendors with uh, that's working on 78 projects. Um, about 80 of those vendors are either in Douglas County or in the surrounding areas of Douglas County. I believe 43 are local. And then of the other 34, 17 are in the state and the other 17 are, um, are outside of the state. Uh, right now, if you see on here, um, about 70% of the SPLOS is with our local vendors. In the past, if this time last year, it was closer to about 30% and the money was even uh, was even lower. And I believe we could go to the next slide. And right now we are doing a lot of virtual reality, uh, which means that's the only way that we really can uh, meet a lot of the uh, vendors. And then at the same time, we are able to uh, meet some of the vendors just going to local shops that have opened and I've been leaving our cards and everything there. Um, next up, you see our local vendors about, you can see the amount of money is 55% is spent. Earlier, Terry mentioned that uh, we have invoiced about $40 million, but what I track is what's in purchase order, and in purchase order, there's about 52 million that have been, have been allocated. If you think about it, um, you look at one of the centers, about $7 million, but if I track the 7 million, I don't uh, track just the 100,000 that might've been spent in the beginning. So right now, this is what you see when you look at local vendors, um, we spent about four, about almost five million with vendors right here in Douglas County, and then we spent another almost 24 million with vendors that's with around Douglas County, like in Carrollton or within the western side of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And then finally, um, this board of commissioners have, has really tried to push uh, DBE and minority-owned vendors, and right now we're about 64 percent of those active contracts. Um, are going to uh, minority bu uh, businesses. If you see the chart, 64 with minority, 36 non-minority. And with that, I am finished, if there aren't any questions. Okay, thank you so much, um, Communications Director David Good, and also thank you, uh, Mr. Terry Gable. Board of Commissioners, do you have any questions for um, Terry or either David this morning? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, I just got one because most of mine will come up later during transportation, Miguel's time. Um, Terry, where do we, I want to go back to the community center. And um, what two things, in something to what Mr. Good just stated, how are we doing project control? I get we live in a pandemic, but accountability is still accountability. We still must ensure that if construction is going on, um, somebody is um, putting their eyes, no pun intended, on um, what's going on out there. Uh, I, I, while I appreciate virtual, um, I've said this constantly in times past, there's nothing like real world. I don't like avatars. Uh, and so um, um, I, I just, I need assurance that somebody, that our program director is out there some kind of way touching these guys and, and overseeing. You're our proxy. You guys are there to represent the Board of Commissioners. And I'm just, we, we hadn't talked in a while, so I'm, I'm not after anything, but I need to hear, but what has been happening over the three to four months that we've been in timeout? Can you give us, can you, can you touch on that for a minute? Terry, please. Uh, yes, sir, I'll be happy to. So all the projects um, since day one, uh, we started out with virtual meetings. Now my, my plan was to, to go to all the site visits. And each month, uh, at least once or twice, the architect, the contractor, um, myself and James Worthington with the county um, meet um, to go over the project status and anything, uh, any issues uh, that, that's come up that month. We started out doing those virtual. Uh, we've opened them up a little bit uh, to actually doing them on site. Um, but uh, outside of that, so I, I'm uh, with James Worthington, obviously, uh, we keeping we keeping tabs on the projects very close each month, uh, and I try to get out there actually a little bit more than that just to, just to know the status of it and what's going on and talking with the superintendent and the project manager with each contractor. Okay, that, that that's fine. I just wanted to um, put it out there to, to 
um, I was just hearing some things and I just, I needed that assurance. This is okay. So but what has been happening? Uh, I hear we're spending money, right? It, it, you know, remember we're the check and balance so every now and then we'll, we'll show up and say, okay, now what's going on. And so, you know, who's overseeing the overseers in essence. So, all right, you get the point. Let me move on. Second point is let's come back to the community center. Um, you said we're a little bit slow coming out the ground. Um, well, who is the firm that's responsible for this project? And uh, is this something that was it groundwork that got us behind or what, what's really going on that we finally, uh, we were a little slow out the gate. You, you sort of framed that and I just wanted to probe a little bit more. Yes, sir. And it was, uh, if you remember, <clears throat> we had a very wet winter uh, and they, that project required a five foot of field to be placed over that entire project site. So they had to get the subgrade stabilized before they started. First of all, it had to dry out. Well, we allotted some time for that. Um, it, you know, it kept raining uh, from, from February into March when they had the notice to proceed. Uh, so they, they were slow because of the weather, because of the, the, uh, the wetness of the uh, subgrade. And, uh, and then even with that, we had some unsuitable soils that had to be removed. So between all that, yeah, we did lose, we, lo we lost some weeks. Uh, and that's that's what I'm referencing as far as coming out of the gate. They they um, they just got caught with the with with the type of project it was in in the field that needed to be brought in. Okay, I just wanted to frame and set expectations for the public that really to your point, uh, it's it's really weather related. Um, it's it's a um, uh, a macro effect in the sense that we recognize how wet it was during that period of time, which is why all of our groundbreakings were pushed off to what just just recently and stuff. So sure. we do acknowledge that. I just wanted to mark that for the Parks and Rec Committee that no, I, you guys have got this, and I want the public to know that we're on point, but we had to work through the weather. So that's all I want to do is just make that reference, Madam Chair. I'm good. I yield. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Any other questions or comments from from the board? Yes, Mr. I Chair. Just... I got this. Okay, Commissioner Mitchell. Yes, so so uh, just a couple of quick questions. Uh, sidewalk projects, I think I heard them, and you know that's kind of been one of those pet peeves of mine, of kind of where we are. So can you just run over those pet, those uh, pro sidewalk walk projects just one good time so we can make sure I know where we are? Right. Yes, sir, let me flip back over to um, each one of them. We'll, I'll go through them real quick. <clears throat> So starting with uh, with Lithia Springs, mm -hmm. so that the we we received the bids in June and um, worked through that process. And again, on the uh, on the agenda today is approval for the contractor that uh, was the low bid, Corbett Group. So that uh, once that's approved, Miguel will quickly go through the contract phase of it and. And get them a notice to proceed. So hopefully they'll be they'll be starting work within a month. Starting and and roughly about when we when you anticipating once we approve this, which I don't see that being an issue. But once it's approved, what's the time frame you think? Uh, and, and at the most thirty days. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. And I don't mean to put you on the spot. Now. I mean if it's no. sixty days, I, I, I'm just kind of get a, a roundabout number because you know this has been a project at least these sidewalk projects been around for. Uh, Many years. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Let your uh, what? And then, then the other is it Chestnut Log Middle School. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, that low bid, same situation. That low bid uh, with Prime Foundation, and that'll be uh, it's on the agenda for the board's review and approval. Um, and that uh, again, well, once that's approved, the roughly 30 days to go through the uh, the the contract execution phase, okay. and get them a notice to proceed. Got it. Okay, go ahead. And then, um, you know, I mentioned New Manchester High School. That's a little bit different. Uh, we're not quite there with that yet, but we're much closer since we've gotten GDOT's approval. Mm -hmm. um, once we do the public hearing and we get that, uh, get the design completed, we, we'll be moving forward with that um, a little bit later in the summer. Got um, okay. So that one is a little bit further down the road. Okay. Yeah. And then lastly was the Maxim Road sidewalk. Mm -hmm. um, and that um, that did not require any any right of way, um, so I think Miguel keeps reporting good things. Uh, that's um, low engineering's doing that, and they're well into the design. And it looks it's looking more and more like we're going to get that project under construction 
uh, latter part of the summer, first fall. Okay, okay. So it appears all the projects should be done, hopefully, by the, the latter part of uh, this year. Yes. Okay, got you. Yes, sir. Okay, good stuff. Um, not sure how we've fallen short in the last couple of months on the collection of the splash and kind of the overage where we were. Where are we now with the overage compared to what we fell? We didn't fall short. We kind of came right in uh, on the mark. So what's our overage now? I think at one time it was like about three million plus. What what the numbers look like as of this time around? And it's it's uh, what our what we reported this month was three point two million dollars. And we stayed pretty much right at if uh, looking at that graph since January, we just about stayed right on target with projections. So it, hadn't, it has not changed. I think I've been reporting that same number now for uh, since the beginning of the calendar year. And I was just anticipating this pandemic, this this COVID nineteen kind of had a some kind of effect, you know, the last mm -hmm. couple of months or so on this. But it appears it's still running stable to a degree. At least we're we're getting our average, I guess, or our projected average, I guess. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 All right, uh, that's all I got. I'll yield back. And can I chime in real quick, Commissioner? Uh, oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, and also, if you think about it, I mean, last year probably was our best year in SPLOS collections. Yes. And so we are not as high as we were mm -hmm. last year, but we are about as high or even better than we were our first year of SPLOS. So I don't want anyone to get confused thinking that there isn't any change, but the change isn't drastic to where we are shooting be well below our, um, you know, our percentages, you know, our projections. Right. Thank we you. Had, we've had such a great overage in the past few years that kind of kept us ahead of the curve. True. So yes. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Well, good enough. All right. I'll leave it at that. So uh, I'll yield back, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Madam Chair. Okay. Commissioner Guider. Commissioner Guider. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> I couldn't push my buttons fast enough. Um, Terry, uh, on the Highway 5, uh, you, know, we, you said we're in the design stage. Will construction start on that this year, or you think it's going to be next year? Uh, let me get, let me back up and get over there. Um, Miguel may can chime in on that. My guess is, uh, based on where we're at right now, that we we may not. It's going to be very close, and we got to get through the right of way phase. Um, that that may be the telltale sign as to whether or not it actually gets under construction. But well, we're you, very, you said you had an agreement with the developer, so that to me that has uh, taken care of the right of way delay. So. He has agreed to yes. Miguel said they they finally made a. Uh, got an agreement from him uh, on the the amount of right away that was needed, and that that gets them past that hurdle. Uh, of course, we still got the utilities to um, to work out, but the design, the final design, is moving forward now. So you've got to get that done, get that foot, footprint set. Um, uh, but this year, or next year, uh, it, when it'll you go break into ground. 20, the construction will go into 2021. Okay. Um, also on the Dog River Bridge, uh, we're, we've got the culvert, uh, the change order on the agenda today. And if that passes, what's the estimated time of completion for that job? Uh, and, and Miguel can go into a little more detail with that, but they are going to have to give the contract their time extension because of some of the delay. Um, if, I re if I remember, I think he's pushed that to the end of the year. Um, but it, it, it should be completed uh, this year. This but, year? Yeah, it's going to go past when we had first anticipated it. All right. And then I'm going to back up to the Stuart Mill Road and, and um, um, Reynolds. Reynolds. Okay. Um, that has just been in right away forever and ever and ever. Uh, remember, this was supposed to have been done with a 2002 splash. The people, that's a very dangerous intersection. If someone's turning, uh, you come around that curve, you, you know, it's just a very dangerous intersection. So um, what's the estimated time of moving with this or breaking dirt, moving dirt? 
Um, I totally understand your your comments. We uh, the good news is we are we are in the right way, and it has been slower. I think, and Miguel can can talk on it a little bit more. But the pandemic has slowed that down as far as right away negotiations. Uh, but I, I anticipate, uh, based on the schedule so far, that we we may have it under contract by the end of the year, um, and that's that would be. Um, Yes, by the end of the year, with the way things are progressing right now, the plans are basically done. Uh, it's just a matter of getting the right of way uh, acquired, and then Miguel can, at that point, put it out for construction. All right. Those are the three things I just had questions about, and I appreciate it. Thank you. I yield back. Sure. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Geider. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Gable. And, um, Thank you, Mr. Good, this morning for your presentation. And it sounds like, in a nutshell, we're doing better than expected in terms of our revenue. So thank you all for bringing that exciting news to us this morning, particularly as we deal with this unprecedented uh, times in our lives. Thank all you. right, Board of Commissioners, we're going to move on and uh, with the remainder of our agenda, which is our business item is next, um, number 10, tab number 10. I just wanted to share with uh, the Board of Commissioners and also the citizens of our County and our directors today. As Douglas County continues to confront the global pandemic of COVID-19, we're now faced with a second pandemic related to racism in our nation. And this particular um, moment in history share, shines a spotlight on the nation's necessity to address racial relations throughout our society. Certainly, I want to commend uh, Commissioner Carthen for her amazing um, effort uh, and taking the lead on this resolution. And certainly will allow, uh, ask her if she would just chime in and just uh, kind of highlight uh, this uh, resolution tomorrow. Tab number 10 is approval of a resolution against racism. Commissioner Carthen. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, in light of all that we've um, gone through these past few, few weeks, um, We've been blessed in Douglas County that we've had protests and those protests were peaceful. We've been blessed that the uh, community came together, even though there were some who didn't agree that Black Lives Matter, they wanted all lives to matter. And there was great dialogue, I believe, during those protests to let people know that all lives do matter. But at this point, our ills against the African-American communities are what we are addressing. And uh, just like with uh, anything that we see an illness in, we have to admit that there is disease. We have to admit that it needs a solution and a treatment so that we can begin the healing. And my hope with this resolution is that we can begin the healing, not only in Douglas County, but even within um, our government. Um, there are times when we know that uh, <sighs> biases happen and uh, they happen, I think, within two or three months of me even being um, a new commissioner. And uh, they were addressed and um, I received an apology. And in speaking with the individual, I really sincerely think um, that his apology was, was heartfelt, that he didn't know what he was doing was indeed um, a racist moment. And I think if we just took the time, each and every time we come across that, I think the healing can begin because I don't believe anybody is intentionally wanting to downgrade or um, dehumanize anybody or any situation. And so I hope that my board of commissioners in this county um, will look at this resolution. I hope that the entire um, board of commissioners will um, adopt this resolution and, uh, and we begin to move forward. Um, we have a great community. We have a diverse community. Um, but we need to have a community that understands um, that we push, must push forward to continue to have a community that um, accepts all people, all races, and all cultures. That's what makes us um, beautiful. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay. But Chairman Thank Jones. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh Commissioner Carthen, we appreciate um, this resolution and look forward to it coming before the Board of Commissioners tomorrow. All right, any questions about this or concerns about this resolution, I mean, I'm sorry, resolution for tomorrow before I move on? 
certainly don't want to just move so quickly. All right, Board of Commissioners, we're going to move on to tab number 11, authorization to, uh, sorry about that, authorization to cancel a solicitation for number 19-016 for the request for uh, qualifications for website design and implementation for the Connect Douglas Transit Services and reject all proposals received as recommended by the Transportation Committee. Uh, Director Evers. Yes, good morning, everyone. Good morning. In December 2019, the Board of Commissioners awarded a contract to Civic Plus for the website design and development of the county's website, which includes all departments. The need for the requested service that was advertised in August 2019 for website design and implement implementation for the Connect Douglas Transit Services has been eliminated to Connect Douglas opting to utilize the services provided by Civic Plus under the current contract that Douglas County has with Civic Plus for website design and development. The design of Connect Douglas's website required additional options. Therefore, these additional options were provided as an add-on cost of $5,221.32. Therefore, we are asking authorization to cancel solicitation 19-016 for the request for qualifications for website design and implementation for the Connect Douglas Transit Services and reject all proposals received. Okay, thank you so much, Director Evers. Board of Commissioners, any questions or concerns? Okay. Now, now okay. can you hear me? Mm -hmm. I can hear you, Vice Chairman Robson. Please okay. proceed. Okay, I, I, I well, two quick things. I'm fine with this one um, in, in that it just, it, um, um, Director Evers, this is just a rejection, correct? That is correct. We're canceling the solicitation altogether and rejecting the qualifications that we received in. Okay. And this comes, um, does it come as a recommendation from the Transportation Committee? Was there some type of contingency? Uh, County Administrator, can you weigh in? I think this was something that we wanted to make sure that there was cover from the other committees. Um, in other words, we're, we're acknowledging the fact that we're going to go with this broader website and throw this away. Can you, can you speak to that, someone? Yes, it came as a recommendation from the Transportation Committee. And when Rick and Gary were working through the process for the website design, um, it was cheaper, uh, more cost effective for us to go with uh, Civic Plus, which was the team that's uh, performing the website redesign on Douglas County. Yeah. All right. So was, was there, um, um, so was there, were, there were no costs um, associated with this interim play. And what we currently got out there as a landing pad, that's just our normal operating cost for uh, putting information out there to the citizens. Is that accurate? Yes. All right. So our current um, um, Connect Douglas website, we currently host it ourselves. It still has the schedules. It still has the map. It still has the information that's out there. And all we were talking about was an upgrade for that. And as opposed to going to an upgrade for that, which is already out there, we're just going to roll this all up under this um, civic um, website. Yes, yeah, sir, that's correct. This this is Gary Watts, and I, I can talk to that. Please. Uh, for for the time being, uh, our website will still be integrated in into the county's overall website. The work that we want to do moving forward is we will upgrade. Uh, our website to where we will continue to be part of the county's overall website, but we have we'll we'll have our own standalone own uh, website presence as well. And this is all integrated in the work that that we'll be asking Civic Plus to do for us. All right. So, but but again, and again, I'll, I'll yield to uh, one of my other commissioners. We're just going to have one website, one overall. Like having silos and having these independent worlds, it, it's not the most efficient. Uh, and I, I guess I understand that there's a bigger picture, a bigger vision for how we aggregate data, share information with our citizens, and also support ourselves operationally. So I'm just, I'm, as we evolve from a 1.0 to a 2.0, I'm just, I'm wanting to hear that, yes, we're moving to a, a one place. Yes, you can have your autonomy in, in, in updating your world. But there is a single view, a single dashboard of our web presence across all areas, all 64 functions of our SDS. All of them 
one spot. Can somebody answer that? One spot. I don't care how the tree branches out. One root, one website. Is that accurate? Well, our, our website will be part of the overall county's website. So I, I think the, the answer to your question is yes. There will be a one one shop for everybody as far as uh, the uh, the county's website. I, and I think Rick Martin's on the line today. He might be able to address that that more. But that's my understanding that it it, it will be one one stop one shop for everybody. Okay, I, I I'm looking for a definitive answer. You're okay, Gary. Thanks for stepping up, uh, Director Watson, to answer that. But I, I need somebody who's who owns this, and who can answer a single question that there will be one vision. Anybody? Yes. That's All right. Ms. Robinson, this is Rick Martin. Yes. One vision, Connect Douglas, will have its own website. Okay. So Connect Douglas will have its own website and everybody else will be part of some other separate website? Yes, sir. All right, so that, that runs contrary to my very point, which is why isn't it integrated? I mean, why, why, aren't, why don't we have, I thought Civic Plus had the capacity to have a holistic view of a county. Uh, and, and while it recognizes that there are different operating entities, different subgroups, different agencies, it still, you should have a single view. And so I, I'm, I'm I'm not trying to belabor this, and I'm going to yield. I'm just... com, com, let, Commissioner, let let me go back to address that again. If 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 somebody's looking for information about Connect Douglas, they can go to www.connectdouglas.com, and it will direct them to our website. However, if if someone goes to the county's website, celebratedouglas.com, and clicks on departments. Uh, Connect Douglas will still be included in that department list. Mm -hmm. So so we will be incorporated into the county's website, but at the same time, um, as a matter of, of individual individuality, someone could just go to connectdouglas.com and it would go directly to us. All right, so I'm, I'm paying um, Civic Plus and I'm paying whoever you're, so I'm, I'm following the money and I, I get these these, you know, Sort of what we went through before with our prior website, you had this, you know, we had these side deals. We we had these favorite entities that were hosting different things and doing updates. Now I'm I'm listening to you guys, and I'm like, okay, it, it sounds like I'm 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 just asking questions. Didn't know where I was going with this until you guys began to respond. But um, I'm going to believe it is for right now. I'm going to take it offline. I, I'm sure I've only got a long agenda. Uh, and sorry for all the feedback where that's coming from, but I, I think I'm okay for right now. Uh, I'm okay with um, doing what we what was on the agenda, which is the business item, which is go ahead and reject as Director Evers asked for. Let's stay on task with that. I support that as coming out of the Transportation Committee, and, and not to belabor that any further. But I will um, have to double back with my my peers on uh, making sure that the overall strategy for our our web design and our ultimate web presence. It's, it's, it's more tightly, tightly integrated than perhaps what I'm perceiving at this moment. Madam Chair, I yield. Madam Chair, can I yes. can I say something? Yes, just, Mr. Vice Chair, Rick Martin here again. Yeah. Just, just to clarify, what we're working out is there will be a link on celebratedouglascounty.com that will take you directly to Connect Douglas. And if people wanted to reach Connect Douglas directly, it would be able to reach Connect Douglas directly as well, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a seamless but bifurcated process, which really in the 21st century, that's pretty uh, acceptable. I'm just, Commissioner Mitchell, I know you are the chairman of this committee. Could you chime in a little bit and just assist us? And I know Commissioner Carthen is the vice chairman. Right, absolutely. And I was going to defer to uh, uh, Commissioner Carthen, but I'll just add just one, one little note to this. I, I think I see where Vice Chair Robinson is going with this, just to verify if there are any funds that are associated with the Connect Douglas site that's going to be deferred to what 
uh, Commissioner Carson is actually putting together, which is uh, the, the new site uh, rig that we're all working on. So that's my first question. The other part of the question would, would also add to this will be one site or one company working our new website, correct? Now, yes, sir. Now, with that, yes, it will house various departments, uh, Connect Douglas and other things that will be a part of this website, correct? Yes. Okay, so I think it's, it's back to uh, Vice Chairman Robinson's question. It's going to be one route with various branch, branches. I get that. So I think that's what he was alluding to to make sure that kind of, yes, we're going to no longer deal with the Connect Douglas layout that you guys were previously going after. We're going to defer and let that kind of, uh, we're going to step aside on that one and, and now focus in on what Tarini, uh, Commissioner Carthen has laid out and the vision that we've got now through programming the new site with TJ and everybody who's working toward, all of us working toward that. Correct me if I'm wrong and, and speak to that if you would, please. Yes, when you say speak to what we're currently doing right now is we're doing an entire overhaul yes. of CelerateDouglasCounty.com uh, through Civic Plus, otherwise known as Civic Engage as well. Um, we are currently um, migrating into a new website. We've had uh, multiple uh, communications with all our uh, departments. Yes in the county to discuss the process um, that is going on uh, through the programming committee. Mm -hmm. uh, we've discussed uh, details, uh, various forms, the layout, um, and we're expected to um, uh, be completed in September, which is you know a, a, a date that we're shooting for right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so I just wanted to kind of just add that that's kind of where we are uh, with this uh, website and the design and, and the steps that we're taking to kind of get to the overall, the overhaul of this particular site. So I'm going to defer, like I said, I'm not going to, I'll leave it at that and defer, I guess, uh, my other comments to uh, Commissioner Carthen if she want to kind of speak toward that as well. Um, thank, thank you. So much. Yes. Carthen. Um, Basically, everything that they just said is correct. It's just a branch off from what we got so that we we do know that most of the time when um, people are looking for something as it pertains to the government, they're going to come to one government site. So it just makes sense for us not to have um, all of these separate contracts when we are one government entity and we're doing the same thing. Um, it also saves money and it also keeps continuity. So each department will have their own branch or link off of our site. They will be able to update it. They will be trained in how to update it so that um, anyone, any constituent, and even us coming to that site will be able to access it um, with ease. Um, so it just, it just makes sense for what um, Director Watson um, decided to do in canceling the bids because we know in order to do that, it probably would have cost more than $5,000. Um, so to us, it's a savings and it's also a continuity of care for those who are coming to visit the site. So um, I'm more than on board with um, what uh, Director Watson is wanting to do and bring it in-house and keep it under um, civic engagement. Okay, and, and I'll leave it at that. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll defer to Commissioner Carthen's comments and job well done. And, and just last one last question though, I guess, I don't know if this for you, Gary, or Rick, it, are there any funds that could possibly come on board with where uh, Commissioner Carthen and myself are, are, and, and the team on programming is going um, that could be added to where we are? And I think, it's, correct me if I'm wrong, it was 125000 am I correct, Commissioner Carthen? Uh, okay, all right, okay. Are, are there any additional funds? Because it only would help, not that we have even, we're still under budget of what we're going with thus far. But I'm just curious to know, so that way it can kind of stay within the programming departments within their budget to kind of keep doing what they're doing and moving those funds forward. So just just a question, not, you know. Sure. Gary. I'll defer to well, Gary. We, yes, sir. Well, we, we do have some grant funds available to help pay for the add-on cost of, of the Connect Douglas part of this process. 
And so Gary, so those funds can be transferable to the to what we're doing already with the site itself, correct? Uh, again, it would be related to the add-on part uh, of what Civic Plus would be doing for Connect Douglas. Oh, that's fine. That's, that's okay. And, and I think that could be a focal point. And I think Commissioner Carson would probably agree that we'll definitely take it in and have that, focal, that, that focus on that particular project with the addition of the overall. Yes, sir. The site itself. Okay, good enough. Um, love to make sure we get those numbers and know what they are and, and know kind of how, how much, well, can you share how much that grant, those grant dollars are or? or well, or the, the, the add-on portion for Connect Douglas is about $5,200. Uh, we have grant money that would pay 80% uh, of that 5,200. Got it. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right, just so we so we can kind of make a note of that. I, I got a bookmark on that. So thank you again for that, and Madam Chair, I yield back. All right, thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Madam Chair. Uh, Commissioner Guider. Yes, uh, I'd like to ask uh, Gary uh, a couple of questions. Uh, don't you have all this uh, pa these pamphlets and notices out there with uh, a dot com uh, for Connect Douglas? Yes, ma'am, and that's 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 not going to change. Again, the way this will will be uh, set up is that will Connect Douglas will be part of the overall county website. That that's never been an issue, but at the same time, we will have it to where if anyone uh, just is looking for information just for Connect Douglas, they can go to connectdouglas.com, and that will pull up our portion of the website as well. Okay. Okay. So you've bought that. Um, we that have that domain. Yes. Site. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I yield back. Okay. Thank and you just so Madam much. Chair, just, just one last thing. So, so we all are clear the infrastructure and is what we're doing and programming with commissioner Carson as leading this, this and championing this, that's the infrastructure, the branch, that vice chairman spoke of will be these types of branches, Connect Douglas, uh, departments, uh, finance, and so on and so forth. So, and we will we'll be presenting something to you guys here, probably within the next month, give or take. I mean, we're just kind of working through all the the dialect of what that looks like. So it's coming and it's coming soon. And I yield back. All right. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell, um, and also thank you, uh, Commissioner Guider, earlier. I uh, just wanted to say that our citizens certainly have been yarning for a, uh, a great user-friendly system website, and I would like to commend Commissioner Mitchell and uh, Commissioner Carthen for certainly pushing this uh, initiative forward and also the entire programming, uh, programming committee. This has been a long time coming, but I believe that it will be very user-friendly and seamless and very easy to use. So thank you all so much for pushing this project through because um, the citizens are very excited. I just wanted to share that with uh, the programming committee. Uh, we're going to move on to our next item. Uh, Board of Commissioners, this, uh, certainly this time is really pushing us a little bit. I want to talk about uh, tab number 12. Tab number 12 is approval of the preliminary plat for Winchester Farms. Is Phil Schaefer on the line? I am, Madam Chair and Commissioners. I will share uh, very quickly a screen with you that shows... Uh, share our plat. The uh, plat I'd like to share with you is the plat of uh, Winchester Farms Phase 2. I wanted to show you that this was an originally uh, platted in 2015. It was seven lots and they've since had the plat expire since plats are only valid for one year. It represents seven lots in Douglas County. The principal portion of Winchester Farms is actually in Carroll County, as is the connecting street that allows them to get to this subdivision. The lots range in size from three acres to six acres. Uh, it's gone through development review and has been approved again. So it's coming back before you for recertification. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Okay, thank you so much, Phil. Board of Commissioners, any questions for um, Phil Schaefer? Okay, Phil, sounds um, good. Sounds like another pipe farm has come off the, the books. Yes, so, it has, Madam Chair. <laughs> thank good. goodness. Very excited. That means we're moving forward. 
Thank you so much. We'll move on to tab number 13. Tab number 13 is authorization to amend the elective provisions of the ACCG Retirement Services Plan Agreement for certain elected and appointed officials as class four employees and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Um, Director Perry. You're muted. You're on mute. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> Uh, good morning, uh, Madam Chair and the Board of Commissioners. Uh, Madam Chair, this uh, amendment uh, that we're, I'm putting forth would uh, be applicable to Class 4 employees. Class 4 employees would include uh, the commissioners, coroner, magistrate, sheriff, tax commissioner, clerk of superior court, chief magistrate, probate court judge, state court judge, juvenile uh, court judge, superior court judge, the solicitor and the DA. Uh, this amendment would allow for those uh, class four employees to elect in-service retirement benefits uh, once they reach the age, uh, the normal retirement age of 65 or older. So uh, uh, at that time, if they elect this benefit, uh, there will be no further uh, added benefits to their retirement uh, annuity. So uh, they could, uh, you know, uh, at the time they reach the normal retirement age, they would be allowed to uh, begin to uh, uh, receive their monthly annuity. Uh, this is something that uh, is done uh, statewide from what I'm understanding from uh, Paul Bates and uh, would be a good benefit to those uh, employees in the class four category. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Director Perry. Any questions from the board or comments? All right, sounds pretty self-explanatory. We'll move on to the next item. Thank you. Tab number 14, authorization to approve the Connect Douglas Madam, Madam, Madam yeah. Chair. Yeah. Yes, I hear a voice. I'm sorry, I couldn't oh, unmute. Oh, Mr. Carlton, you couldn't get the <laughs> so, button. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, Director Perry, can you yes, tell us what, we, what was elected before and why this has come about? What, what was elected before? Okay, so so this is uh, this is just a, an option for us. So it actually uh, was one that uh, that we had not put into use. So uh, you would have to either meet the rule of uh, 80, or you would have to uh, meet the normal retirement age of 65, and you could not uh, still remain in service to uh, to take advantage of your monthly annuity. So that's the difference. Okay, and, how, how, and did this come about because you were going through the um, through the pension and and what we had on the books, and you okay. actually this came about uh, a couple of years ago uh, with the with the sheriff. The sheriff, once he was elected, uh, he he retired prior to his uh, um, to his election, his first term as sheriff. And he continued on uh, to receive his retirement benefit in era. So there was some things that we had to clean up, but the conversation actually started then. He wanted to know, uh, you know, if it was a possibility for him to continue on as sheriff and continue to receive his uh, uh, his annuity benefit. That's something that I talked with Paul Bates about. And then um, he brought it to uh, my uh, attention that there was an election in our adoption agreement that was a lot of that, but uh, the person allotting, uh, taking advantage of that benefit would have to be the normal retirement age of 65. It couldn't be, uh, you know, the unreduced retirement age or anything other than that normal retirement age or older. Got you. So this allows us to clean that up and not have um, the the annuity and the, the the getting of the funds. This allows us to clean us up. Okay. Yes, yes. And okay. it allows us to clean that up and then it allows us to provide this option for anyone that uh, reaches normal retirement age and they're continuing on in service to the county. Got you, okay. Do you know how many people this will affect and is this in retro? It is not in retro. This is okay. something that will go into effect if approved by uh, the Board of Commissioners, I believe on the 1st of July. 
it would no. not be a retroactive. So it would be a 1st of July moving forward. Okay. All right. Thank you. Madam Chair, I yield. Okay, Mr. thank Robinson. you, Commissioner Carson, Vice Chairman Robinson. I see yes, you. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right. So th this is dealing with benefits, retirement benefits. Uh, and this dealing primarily what it sounds like elected officials. Yes, right. sir. All right. So here I am making a decision on basically my compensation. It's okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm making my point as you know I normally do. So I'm going to make a decision on my 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 future parachute. Uh, now I get it. it. It's for those who are obviously more seasoned to me, and I'm okay with that. But I'm I'm, I'm making my point. All right, so I'm going to make a decision as a board of commissioner on the benefits of all elected officials. All right, so if I'm going to do that, I want to know the fullness of when this pensions. To make a decision on this one, I want to know the whole story. Okay, we, Pat. We're going to open this up. So I want to know when the pensions vest. I want to know when salaries vest. I need a full picture of compensation for all elected officials. Because while I'm in here, I I, I don't like nickel and diamond. I don't like, like, I just, I've been here too long to understand how, like, okay, I need to see the whole picture. So uh, for me to make a decision, I need that information sooner than later. Uh, I can't speak for my peers. Perhaps they, they'd like to take a different position. Is there a timetable in which I need to make a decision? In other words, I, I want you to take your time and not shotgun this, but if there's some type of vesting period that we need to meet, but I think to my peers, we need to understand what this means for, for us, basically. What, what are we saying here? Uh, again, this sort of caught us off guard that says, and it's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. it's like, okay, so something prompted this, and since it opened it up, I want to know everything. Okay. So how can you get me there? Um, well, it take uh, a minute? It, well, it probably would take longer than, uh, than a day? Uh, you know, than, period, than a day, correct. So, um, uh, it probably would uh, involve uh, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson uh, us to sit down and have a, uh, a conversation about it. Um, I'm thinking that, uh, as I mentioned, the individuals that it would affect uh, the class four uh, employees. So pretty much the judges and uh, all the uh, other names that I mentioned. So uh, I could get some uh, uh, some demographic information surrounding those individuals. I'm not sure if that's what you're asking for. But you would, in order to take advantage of this benefit, you would have to reach the normal retirement age of 65. So either you would go into office at, a, at an older age, or you would uh, have to serve a, a long number of, of, of terms for for you to be eligible for this benefit. No, I, and I understand. I'm I'm obviously one of the young. I used to be the youngest. I'm no longer the youngest. Uh, per se. So I, I, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, it, it's not a self deal. I'm, I'm just mm -hmm. seeing that I'm not impacted by it immediately. I, I guess I'll take responsibility to say, okay, so what are we saying? So I'm not necessarily after demographic. That wasn't what I was after. I, li I just want to know what the financial structure is. Okay. The when, do we when, when, when does everybody, all these elected officials, when, when does their pension kick in? Is it five years, seven years, nine years? How does this, I'm looking for top level. I'm just looking for okay. maybe there's something I can take offline. Uh, I'm not certain uh, my colleagues are. Um, Director Perry, if we can go offline, uh -huh. and, uh, and we can have a conversation. But I want facts. I don't want a, a conversation. I need to be in writing. Uh, and and, and I, if I'm satisfied, I'm okay with tomorrow moving forward. If there's some type of deadline they're trying to make by some fiscal year of the state or the federal, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with that. I can't speak for my peers. So I, if, if you can get me there, then I can get there. But okay. I need what I need. All right. Absolutely. All right. I yield, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Madam Chair. Commissioner Mitchell, I, I have two people. I heard Commissioner Mitchell first, and then Commissioner Guider, you could proceed after Commissioner Mitchell. Commissioner okay. Mitchell. And, and I'll be really brief. So, so Fred, just from yes. a timely perspective, is, is, is time of the essence on this? Or is no, it? It is not. Okay, so if, if, if we took this offline and took it off the agenda, just so we can kind of get some clarification on a couple of making sure what I'm voting on and what effect this will have on on elected officials and others, pensions and so on. Mm -hmm. Could if we did this, 
the meeting after next or whatever it did. So time is not of the essence on this here. So if we if we wait it just so we can get some clarification, that's fine. That 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 that, that will be fine, Commissioner. Okay. Because because I I do have some offline questions that I've got that I'd like to ask a couple of questions. So I'm going to leave it at that and, and wait and uh, hope that we'll pause, push pause on this and try to figure out you know, answer at least some of the questions that I have. And I think Vice Chairman Robinson and others, but I will yield back and wait and hope that we try to take this offline and, and figure something out down the road. Okay. I Thank, yield back. You so much. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Commissioner Guider. Uh, uh, <clears throat> yes, ma'am. I agree with the Commissioner Mitchell. We don't know enough about what we're voting on here and the fiscal impact it would have on the county, how it's going to affect the, uh, the elected officials. So um, I would recommend that we table this or put this off uh, on another agenda until we've had maybe one-on-one -on -one with you or, or two-on-one -on with you and uh, let, let us ask questions about it. It take all all day for us to do that at this meeting. So uh, with that, I yield back. I just concur with uh, Commissioner Mitchell. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. Um, thank thank you, Madam Chair. I can, uh, I, I've, I've taken a few notes and I think that I know uh, what the uh, what they ask is and the information that's needed. I can get in contact with uh, with Paul Bates and uh, get some additional information and uh, and come back to the uh, to the board. I'll say and also uh, Fred, I ask that you meet with each individual uh, commissioner. Okay. Including myself and just give us a, some clarity. Absolutely. There. Okay. Absolutely. And, all right. Well, thank you so much. And uh, we look forward to this item coming back in the very near future. Okay. Thank you. Um, we're going to move to tab number 14. So, clerk, if you could remove uh, tab number 13, uh, we're going to table it uh, for further just, uh, I won't even call it investigation. We just need some more information. And then we'll uh, certainly, I would like to see it come back within the next, uh, at least by the uh, first meeting in July. Well, no, that's next week, but at least by the second meeting in July. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Depends on how fast we move. All right. We're going to move on to tab number 14, authorization to approve the Connect Douglas Transit Safety Plan, which is a federal transit administration requirement and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Watson. Yes, ma'am. This, this is a new requirement for tra federal transit administration grantees uh, this year to have a transit safety plan. Here in Georgia, we've been fortunate that the Georgia Department of Transportation has taken the lead on this and assisting all transit agencies in the state in formulating this plan. GDOT gathered information from each individual system, including um, Connect Douglas, and put together a template for us with this information uh, in it. So it has all the required elements uh, that FTA asked for. So we've been working with GDOT on this process for several months now. Uh, we have the finished product, and what we what we're asking for now is uh, the board to officially adopt this uh, safety plan to where we can have Madam Chair to sign it and then submit it back to uh, GDOT by the July the first deadline. Okay, thank you so much. Any questions from the board? Sounds pretty self-explanatory. We'll move on. Thank you so much, Director Watson. We're going to move on to tab number 15, uh, authorization to approve the SFY 2021 aging services contract with the Atlanta Regional Commission in the amount of $518,974.99, reimbursable amount of $483,061.2022, and a local match of $35,913.77 and uh, amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Um, Dr. Gilchrist. Good morning, Madam Chair and Board of Commissioners. Um, good first, good morning. First, I would like to acknowledge that today, June 15th, is World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. And to bring to everyone's attention that an estimated 5 million older adults are abused, neglected, or exploited each year. 
and to just ask everyone to please, please, please support report suspected abuse, neglect, or exploitation by calling um, the Division of Aging Services at 404-657-5250 or 911. So um, I just wanted to get that important information out there. So the item um, on the on our agenda is to um, authorize our annual um, contract with the Atlanta Regional Commission. The match is $35,913.77. Okay, any questions from the board? Okay, sounds pretty self-explanatory. Now, I know your match is in your budget, right? Correct, Dr. That's Hill? correct, okay. that's correct. All right, thank you. We're gonna move on to tab number 16, authorization to award a contract for construction of the Chestnut Log Middle School Sidewalk Project to Prime Foundation LLC in the amount of $275,862.29 to be funded from the 2016 SPOS funds as recommended by the Transportation Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director uh, Miguel Valentin. Yes, good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Uh, we're finally at, at the cusp of getting this project to uh, construction. The uh, bids came in. We had a total of six bids. They, they came in well within the budget for this particular uh, project. So um, upon award of the contract and getting the document signed, we'll hold a pre-construction meeting with the contractor and uh, get the project uh, underway. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Okay. We'll move on to tab number Madam 17. Chair. Okay, Vice Chairman Robinson. Thank, thank you. I'm not sure what this feedback is, I, uh, the, the audio, but um, Miguel, obviously sidewalks is, is, is something that has been expressed for um, obviously, uh, you know, before you and, and, and now since you. Um, Again, to the public, uh, the, the, the county has evolved or is evolving beyond what they used to call cow pastures and gravel dirt roads to a point where uh, it, it, it's become more of an advanced community. Um, while we've had sidewalks within our subdivisions, uh, which is, you know, we, we, they're manicured lawns and um, obviously cul-de-sacs, uh, when they come out onto the main or uh, sort of sub arteries, uh, there's a need to uh, coexist with pedestrian and, and, and obviously mobile traffic. Uh, but the cost, and I, I'm just highlighting the fact that, um, and, and I recognize that in perhaps non-metro areas, there was a thought that, well, we don't need street lights. We don't need sidewalks. Uh, we don't want that. Uh, the convergence and the density of, of obviously the eighth most dense county in the state. Uh, it, 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 this, it, this transition is it, it, having an impact on us and, and its growth. Uh, and I mean, I, we need to think about this. It says this is it's taken four years from the time that we put this on the list. We're in our fourth year. Uh, kids, by the time we deliver this, the kids will pretty much be driving at this rate it, and it's, it's I'm, I'm you know fun with that but then at the seriousness of it that and I appreciate you being here and the fall for this it's okay we're going to reimagine and redesign the county and and upgrade our infrastructure it has to be it can't just be what I used to, I, I used to foresee us being we were cheap on we don't want to spend that money on those lights. And, and, and it was never for thinking and the cost now is just that I'm listening to this cost. I'm like, this is insane. And I get it. The cost is the cost, but it was always short. It's all our, our prior decisions were always just in the moment. And it was, it was sort of a, a false approach to community building. It was only in the moment and never anticipated life beyond the moment. And so here we are, the children and the grandchildren of prior decisions, like, okay, y'all wasn't very thoughtful, <laughs> right? It, it wasn't very, it was only in the, I, I get conservation, but conservation has to lay a foundation for conserving for what? 
You're conserving for the future, hopefully. And so I, I'm look, I'm listening to this now. Again, you've got the standard, the guys that you know. Obviously, you guys laid a standard for future development, economic development. Obviously, sidewalks are going to be there. I get it. It's just a retro, and, and obviously, I will never back away from the fact that children uh, obviously need safe passages uh, around these schools, around these parks. It's not, it's not my issue. But you got to highlight the lessons, uh, and I do that often with students. Like, okay, what was the object lesson here? From an urban planning perspective, what was the object lesson? Did we not get that? And hopefully, that, that obviously, life will go on beyond me. But the point being is that hopefully you guys are codifying these 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 understandings of how a community should be developed and how it, we can do a better job at, at being more efficient in making our decisions and that we don't have just these false moments of like uh, uh, this like we're, we're we're saving and that well that's spending and we're just like no Plus one four seven zero nine five five one two eight three is that's now cool. exiting Okay, I'm not sure what that was, but nevertheless, I, I, you, I my point has been made uh, regarding this. Um, the sidewalks are very, very important projects, and I know you've got a couple more on the agenda, which we won't belabor. I won't speak to those because they, they go hand in hand with the moment. But I, I just think that as we move forward, um, it's going to cost us to retrofit and age infrastructure. These sidewalk projects and, and the things that we're doing to shoot are just the beginning. The resurfacing that people have said that it's important to them, it's just we 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 conserved to do nothing. I just heard earlier Parks and Rec with like we're things are 20 years old, 40 years old. We've been waiting on this. It's like yeah, but look at the priorities that were set. Like park things that should have been done in the 2002 splash with what three splash later. And and that's my point about priorities. And so I, again, I just got to drive home the point that to the citizens, we heard you. We know sidewalks are very important to you. We know resurfacing is very important to you. And I appreciate you, Miguel, trying to keep this thing uh, to, to sort of fix this thing. Uh, because again, I don't want it to fall on deaf ears or that people are like, no, this is costly. This this is, think about $270,000 for a sidewalk project? You know how many cars I could have bought with that? But anyway, I'm going to believe that. Um, and my point is well made. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. I hadn't got out of my time. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, um, Vice Chairman Robinson. Okay, if there are not any other questions, we're going to move on to tab number 17, authorization to award a contract to the Corbett Group LLC in the amount of $363,846.75 for construction of the Turner Hill Middle School sidewalk uh, project to be funded from the 2016 SPLOST as recommended by the Transportation Committee and authorized the Chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentin again. Please, Thank you, Madam right. Chair. <clears throat> and this is another similar project, and I will address some of the comments uh, made by Commissioner Robinson as part of this as well. Uh, whenever you have to retrofit uh, an area uh, to build sidewalks, you have to have other components that go with it. For example, if you, you want a separation between pedestrians and vehicular traffic, so you have to have a curb to protect the pedestrians. So uh, with that then comes in the drainage changes that are necessary. So it is a domino effect. Uh, if, the, if the sidewalks go in with the original construction, they would be much cheaper to do. Uh, but as a retrofit, uh, uh, it isn't just the sidewalk, it's the curb and the drainage. Uh, that goes with it as with it. Okay, thank you. Any questions from the board? I'm a, if not, I'll move on to the next item. Okay, thank you. We'll move on to the next item. Tab number 18, authorization to award a contract in the amount of $1,356,815.75 uh, to Baldwin Paving Company uh, Incorporation for milling and patching of various roads in connection with the 2020 LMIG SPLOS Road Resurfacing Program as recommended by the Transportation Committee and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. And Director Valentin, could you explain that maybe to some of our citizens, milling and patching is required before you resurface. So can you just explain the process to our citizens? Certainly. Certainly. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd be happy to. Uh, some of the roads uh, are in such a bad state of repair that 
if we were to just overlay on the existing surface, uh, it wouldn't last very long. It would crack and deteriorate very quickly. So we have to go in to the existing pavement, cut out the bad areas, and make the repairs. And then, so we can do the overlay on top of good asphalt. Uh, some of the, the roads, we have to actually mill uh, the surface, and that is a, a process of grinding the asphalt that's there down to a couple inches or inch and a half to two inches. And uh, once we do that, then we have a, a smooth, even surface to put the new layer on top. So depending on the condition of the road, depending on uh, the um, need for patching of isolated areas would be what type of remedial work needs to be done before the actual resurfacing. Unfortunately, uh, at times in the past, there have not been uh, the there has not been the level of um, patching because it, it is costly uh, to to the road pavement uh, ahead of the resurfacing, and so the roads have not uh, lasted very long. So, in this particular case, uh, the contract uh, for the milling and patching is to prepare the road so that when we lay down the new asphalt surface, it is gonna be a durable surface and will not break up in, in a few years. Thank you so much. Board, anyone else, uh, any board members wanna weigh in before I move on to the next item? Okay, thank you, I'll move on to the next item. Tab number 19, authorization to approve supplemental agreement number two with the Corbett Group in connection with the construction of the Whitestone Covered Project, which will reduce the contract amount by $123,955.46 as recommended by the Transportation Committee and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. And this is some exciting news. I heard the word reduction in costs. Could you speak to that, Director Valentin? Uh, certainly, Madam Chair. Uh, we had initially uh, had the project design for the culvert to sit on piles. Uh, that type of foundation is um, more uh, costly, and certainly uh, it could, it, if you do not have a good understanding of what the soils below are, uh, then that is a safer approach to, to um, a design. However, as we got into construction of the project, uh, it became uh, a little uh, more clear that perhaps there was a different type of design for the foundation uh, called spread footings, which is a more traditional type of foundation that would still be suitable for that area. And so we had uh, additional geotechnical work done to confirm that the soils could handle uh, a spread footing design. And then once we determined that, then we had the, the footings redesigned and this change order will change uh, the footing from a pile foundation to a spread footing foundation. And of course, inherently, uh, it is uh, much more um, cost effective to, to construct. It will reduce uh, by a little over $123,000 the, the, the cost of the project. Uh, some uh, of those costs we at some point may need to revisit, but at this time, uh, it, approval of this uh, supplemental agreement will allow us to get the project back underway, get it under construction, and perhaps uh, uh, complete it before um, the end of the year, if possible. Uh, the contract uh, timeline, however, uh, that's been requested by the contractor is uh, to, to run into February 1st of 2021. And we believe that uh, that is not unreasonable, uh, but we're still looking for substantial completion of the project uh, to and, and to have the road back open to traffic before the end of the year with uh, some cleanup work and some uh, additional uh, peripheral work to, to carry on into January of next year. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Director Valentin. Did a very good job summarizing what the plan is. Uh, any further comments from the board? If not, I'll move on to the next item. Madam All Chair? Right. 
Okay, Vice Chairman Robinson, I heard your voice. Yes. Yeah, we're, we're still in the work session mode. So prior question, Miguel, go back to the Director Valentin. I want to talk about uh, the Baldwin contract. We talked about this in the Transportation Committee. And we, you, you, you said there's milling and some other things. Didn't you say some mowing? Did, was mowing involved with this contract? Uh, no, Commissioner, just uh, milling and patching, just All right. asphalt work. All right, just asphalt work, and it's going to be in-house? Uh, uh, no, the, uh, uh, the milling and patching will, will be contracted. It will be done by Baldwin if, if the board approves that contract. And then the resurfacing, the laying down of the new asphalt will be done in-house. All right, that, I, I wanted to bring back what Terry Gable mentioned earlier. So appreciate for that clarity. I, I, again, it's been a couple hours. I wanted to tie them two together. All right, so is this the first time we're doing it that way? Which is uh, we're contracting that part. Now, is this this is just for the LMIG, right? This is not for the big SPLOS contract, right? We're being consistent. Is that true? That That is correct. This is primarily for the LMIG uh, program. Um, LMIG normally addresses residential um, subdivision streets primarily, and the, the SPLOS addresses more the collectors and arterial roads, longer, wider, bigger roads. So this, uh, the paving that we do uh, on this type of road is something that the county has done many times before. The only difference is that as part of the program, we are doing more extensive maintenance of the road to prep it for the new overlay. And that work, the county does not have the equipment to be able to do. So the county has never done the, um, the milling because we it's always been contracted out. Um, the patching we have done, and, and we do, um, but it is... Um, patching done in a different manner, not with the same type of equipment uh, that um, that a contractor would do because they use a milling machine uh, to do some of the deep patching. And of course, we do not have a milling machine. But to your question, Commissioner, uh, the paving that we're doing is something that we have consistently done. And the uh, milling work and the deep patching uh, that is being done under contract has always been done under contract uh, when we've done the paper. The reason I ask is when you first came on board, what about three years ago, um, you know, it was it was a, a, philo a philosophical shift that we, we yeah. welcomed operationally. How do we approach um, the service delivery in relation to transportation, maintenance of our roads? And, and I'm constantly listening to, but do we have the capacity to do this and do this well? Um, I, I go back to my Riverside, and you and I have had this conversation uh, regarding our bike lanes. And uh, again, the more I hear, I, I, I appreciate the little engine that could, and it believed that it wants to go do, but does it have the capacity and is this the willingness of this board to put the money behind like, okay, yeah, I hear y'all. I know it's going to cost to deliver transportation in a way that I believe that Miguel has a vision, but let's let's not let's not let's make sure that we're really committed to that. Uh, let, let's make sure that we're understanding what 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 he's saying. To maintain this is going to require an investment. The citizens have declared, look, okay, we appreciate all that, but when y'all get to our subdivision, when you go maintain my street, I get it. But I need everybody to have their eyes wide open. Like what, what what's being said here? Like okay, we're going down this path. I see us easing on this path. But it's like okay, let's make sure we're all on the same page. It's going to cost, right? To, to maintain this at the level that we're saying we're doing. We're not saying we're going to swallow the whole sandwich. But I, I as a as the chairman of transportation, I have to also again put that out there for my peers. Says okay, yes, I recommend all these things come forward. Know what we're saying. Know what we're getting into. That's all I want to do is make my point. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. We're good. Keep going. Thank you, Thank you so much. All right. If there's Chairman there are, Jones. Yes. Um, um, Commissioner Car Carpenter. Yeah. Carpenter. I do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, Director Valentine, 
for the past milling and patching work um, that we've spent in the past, do you recall what the amount was? Do you have an estimate or a guesstimate as to what we've spent in the past? Um, I don't. I don't have a clear recollection because the work has been done as a package where they've done the milling and the patching and the paving. Uh, so, okay. I, so, so uh, for example, the, uh, the work that was done, uh, the last contract that was uh, fairly close to five and a half million, as I recall, uh, the, the big um, resurfacing contract, uh, certainly there was milling and patching work as part of that. And it probably would have been in excess, well in excess of what this contract is because there were more roads and um, uh, collector roads and arterial roads as well. So it is it is uh, something that is either uh, part of the overall contract when it's bid, um, but it is a significant cost uh, whenever we have to do uh, milling. Uh, for example, the, the one instance that I do recall uh, where the project was done, um, where the milling uh, was done as part of the uh, the paving contract was the Lee Road project. And my recollection is that that was somewhere in the neighborhood of $650,000 just for one road. So you can Do you know the, the mileage on that road? Like, it was, was two that and a half a miles. Couple? Two and a half <laughs> miles, 600,000. Okay. Because I noticed for, for each of our districts, uh, except for one of the districts, uh, well, District 1, 2, and 3, we're, we're right at about two miles, but I know for District 4, we're at 3.8 miles, um, which gets us to that 10.8 miles. So District 4 is almost double. And I know they are more rural and they have a few more roads that they're trying to maintain. Um, but the, we, we want people to understand the, the cost of things and that costs are continually going up for us to do these things. And we're trying to mitigate the costs, I see, by you bringing at least the patching in-house for, for us to do that. So I just want people to recognize, you know, in the past what has been done and, and what this administration is trying to do to, to clean some of this up and... Uh, and that, you know, in District 4, we're going over and above because two miles in District 3, four miles almost in District 4. So uh, we, we just want to, you know, highlight that and what we're trying to do to uh, get the constituents some roads, some paved roads, which we all want, which, you know, our cars want that, our tires want that. Um, and we want to see the progress. So I just wanted to to understand what we spent in the past versus what we've spent now. So you gave some clarity on that. Thank you so much. Uh, with that, Madam Chair, I yield. Okay, thank you so much. And I heard Commissioner Guider. Commissioner Guider? Yes, ma'am, and I appreciate that. Uh, and to shed a little light on uh, what Commissioner Carthen was talking about, District 4 has uh, over 30-something percent of roads in Douglas County, so um, our, our roads are longer. One, one year I could only do one road, and that was post road. So um, well, we don't have as many of the small subdivision streets and everything. And one, one district is actually less than 20%. So they get, uh, uh, we, we've, I've always advocated that we split it up by uh, percentage road because I'm never going to catch up and they're going to go around a couple of times before uh, I even finish one loop. But um, anyway, I, I was just going to ask, we're going to mill uh, Stuart Mill Road. So are we going to keep those millings? Uh, yes, Commissioner. Is that for a contract? It is in the contract, yes. Okay, good, because we always have these dirt roads that uh, we don't hardly do anything, but uh, the millings does help a lot, especially with the washing and um, the dust. So I appreciate that. So just wanted to ask that question real quick. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Guyton. I just want to remind our citizens, remind our citizens that a lot of our roads are over 40 years old. They hadn't been paved. Some of them hadn't been paved to 20 to 40 years. 
and we're playing catch up and we are working very hard to see what we can do to allow everyone to have a smooth experience because I know it's not that fun when you have to go and realign your cars and also get a new tire perhaps. So with that being said, uh, we'll move on to, tab. I believe I was at tab 20, clerk, is that correct? I was on tab 20, Lisa. I believe I was. Sorry, uh, I had to take my mute okay. off. Um, yes, ma'am, you were on. Um, tab number 20, I believe. Yes, ma'am, tab yes. 20. Okay. Authorization to approve supplemental agreement number one in the amount of $150,000 with Southeastern Engineering Incorporation for design changes to the Chapel Hill Road intersections and widening project and, uh, project and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentin. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Just just a little background on this particular item. The uh, original design was intended to have just three lanes, including turn lanes. And uh, when we received the cost estimate from our design consultant, uh, they pointed out that uh, the, uh, uh, the cost of doing the full five lane widening was not that significantly different uh, relative to the cost of doing the three lane widening. And so uh, we explored that, uh, had some discussion at the transportation committee uh, meetings and uh, went back to the, uh, to the consultant and said, okay, well, uh, if we were to do that, what, are, what is the impact uh, gonna be on the design component, if any? And uh, they came back with, uh, uh, the fact that the scope changes would require additional survey, and that's understandable. They initially would not have surveyed for an extra lane on either side of the road. Uh, they also, uh, because of a five-lane configuration uh, acting differently, you have to transition back to the existing, recommended that we go to the nearest intersection on the north side, which would be the Anawakey Road uh, intersection, uh, the other project would have ended a few hundred feet south of there. And then on the south side, they suggested that we consider going to um, to the high school uh, as well, because we could take advantage of existing turn lanes and incorporate those into, uh, into the project. So this design will give us uh, the final configuration of the road. Uh, and um, what, if, if, this gets constructed as a five lane, uh, as we envision, uh, then there's gonna be very little uh, disruption when the rest of the road uh, begins to get widening, uh, widened in the future. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Director Valentin. This certainly is good news for District 3, and I know uh, Commissioner Carlton has worked alongside with you to champion this, this uh, moment right now, it's certainly, uh, that road is a main vein here in the county. It's highly traveled. It's a huge corridor, and it's one that uh, is utilized by a lot of our citizens to get back and forth to that South Fulton area. So I'm uh, very pleased, and I know Commissioner Carthen is with this. Um, certainly, you've taken this project before, so we could go in and look at the design even further for widening. Board of Commissioners, any comments regarding this project? Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and our Transportation Committee Chairman, I want to commend him for working all these roads. It's a lot of roads in Douglas County. It's almost 800, well, 750 miles worth of roads. And I'll commend you in just a second, Vice Chairman, but please, you have the floor. No, it's fine. Thank you, Madam Chair. Again, I'm gonna, I mean, this is important for Douglas County. And I, I, I obviously, just coming through the season, we just came through and really listening to the citizens and what their priorities were. And, and you have to listen to the citizens before you listen to staff because citizens are the ones that even enable staff to be here. And, and, and think about the list, and I'm not certain about this, what the feedback is. If, if, if you think about the list that was created, uh, it, it was created based on the aggregation of input that had been received over time back in 2017, about three years ago. And it, it was, and it's important that as we look at the list, it's like, well, where did that list come from? It was obviously either staff or citizens over time had added it to the list. Maybe a commissioner advocated for theirs. And and I'm I'm, I'm thinking about this, and I was listening to the prior conversation about allocation of resources. I'm like, well, districting lines deals with census. I mean, I, okay, I'm gonna let that go. I'm not gonna belabor that point. Obviously, the map was created based on 
obviously uh, minority concentration of people and how it was written. So I'm not going to buy that, but okay, I'll let it go. Um, I, I think sometimes that, yeah, District 4 has more, more acreage, but that's what it's equal amount of people, but it was based on obviously the census. Um, if I think about the commercial contribution, um, District 3 has the most, uh, the least amount of commercial. They're 91% residential contribution to the digest. District um, 4 is about 75% um, is, is residential. Obviously, 70% for um, obviously District 1, and I'm pretty much balanced 50 50 almost. So there's a lot that goes into community planning, right? It's just not about me. It's like you see the whole picture. And when I think about District 3, and I, again, I go back to Commissioner Carth, and I, I was surprised to see the pent up. Like, no, they always want to change Chapel Hill. So going from the prior um, um, representation to the current, it's two different worlds. Because the, the whole notion was District 3 is it's residential. We don't want any growth. We want to keep this thing contained. And I remember them cattle crawls. It's like, well, we like it like that. We don't mind driving five miles to the grocery store. We want to keep it. And, and, and to look at this night and day like representation, it's like, wow. It's like we're watching it pent up. So I'm delighted and I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased to accommodate this. Remember, we changed the list. I mean, we went against the Mitchell rule. No, we added this to the list. It was that important. Like, no, District 3 gets to get their representation. And I know she came after the fact, but we modified this because it was that important. We modified the list to get there on there and to accommodate even now for the future growth of this area, um, obviously for that Chapel Hill corridor. So uh, respectfully, I, uh, it's an honor to, to sort of make this adjustment um, in the moment, uh, recognizing that times does change. You can depart. You can acknowledge the past, but you have to embrace your future. In this moment of transition, and while there's always a cost with everything, uh, I, and as we go through sort of the, the obviously the process of what they want to call this of construction, excuse our our mess, it's well worth it. Uh, I, I think it's important. So I, I wanted to drive home that that little lesson there that says that I, I welcome it. I welcome this transition. Yes, it's an additional cost, and I just want to make, leave with this point because I'm I'm almost out of time. What is going to be the source of this adjustment? Um, Miguel, Director Valentin. The source of money to make the adjustment for uh, Chapel Hill. Anybody? County Administrator? Miguel. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, this, this is Miguel. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, we can. Now okay, we can. sorry. Uh, yes. Um, we uh, we had some discussion about uh, uh, the, uh, where the funding was going to come from at the transportation committee, and one of the one of the projects where we have realized some savings um, is the intersection of Mount Vernon and State Route 92, uh, because we were able to to have GDOT absorb uh, the cost of that project. And uh, this, it, it originally had been earmarked for improvements, and the funding, I believe, was $250,000 allocated to it. So uh, even though there have been some reduction in, in the interim on that project, uh, uh, it, it is still um, within a couple hundred thousand, close to 200,000 in funding that still remain allocated to that project. And so the recommendation is for it to now be um, allocated to to this particular effort. Yeah. I just want to acknowledge that that we, we were able to accommodate that and, and find the funding for this. So uh, again, I just want to drive home that point, Madam Chair. That's all my time. I yield. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Vice Chairman Robinson. We're going to move on, but before we move, I just wanted to mention the fact that we've outgrown our infrastructure here in Douglas County, and certainly this is an opportunity, and I'm excited about all these pro progressive projects that are coming through. I uh, certainly wanted to make sure that I commend our transportation uh, chairman, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, for doing such a great job working, and I've worked with him along side by side on these roads. And I, it's just appalling to see that uh, just some of them just had not been addressed in many, many years prior to me arriving. And this is so exciting to see our roads certainly uh, get a facelift. And some roads need a filling and others need a root canal. So we are working intensively, so I want to make the citizens aware of that. I'm going to move on to tab number 21, which is another exciting opportunity. We've had citizens, that record, some citizens that were concerned about the speed 
along the Riverside Parkway area and is authoriz uh, authorization to adv advertise for a public hearing for the purposes of amending code section 14-74 speed limits to reduce the speed limits on Riverside Parkway and State Route 92 uh, slash 154 and 166 and authorize the application for amendment to the county's radar permit to allow enforcement and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Valentin, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, this will facilitate uh, reducing the speed limit on those roads, uh, State Route 92 and Riverside Parkway, particularly. Uh, one additional benefit to just having um, a speed reduction, which should yield a, a safety improvement along those corridors, is that uh, our sidewalk project on, on uh, State Route 92 uh, for the high school uh, sidewalks um, had a component uh, of a crossing uh, signal for pedestrians, um, uh, referred to as a as a hawk signal. And uh, when we initially submitted the plans to GDOT, they they would not approve that the installation of that signal uh, because the speed limit on the road was too high. And so we had discussion with them. We said we concur. The speed is too high, and uh, we've been trying to uh, get it reduced for a while. And so we we had several discussion sessions in uh, iterative process, but finally they have um, allowed um, the process to move forward, indicating that they will in fact support uh, this application when it comes back before them, uh, because this this um, element has. Uh, or this particular project has uh, two elements. One is the speed reduction um, to facilitate the, the project crossing, but also because the speed is going to change, there has to be an application back uh, through the uh, Division of uh, Public Safety at the state level for the radar permit to be amended so that the new speed limit can be uh, enforced. Uh, the lower speed limit. So uh, we've we've been in communication with the sheriff's office, and and uh, so this will facilitate um, once we go through that public hearing process and and um, changing the code um, to reflect a lower speed limit. Uh, then we're able to move the process forward, install the signage, and uh, enforce the lower speed limit. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any questions or comments? Okay. Thank you. I appreciate your iterations of our work and deliberations with the GDOT to move this project forward, uh, Director Valentin. You have one more, last but not least, which is 22, authorization to approve a resolution designating the intersection of Douglas Hill Road and Factory Show Shoals Road as an all-way stop control intersection. Director Valentin, if you could explain. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. The, the intersection... Um, is in an area that up until recently had really one paved road, and that was Factory Shoals. Um, Douglas Hill, uh, as it intersected with uh, uh, Douglas Hill Road, as it intersected Factory Shoals uh, just to the west of um, Thornton Road, uh, was a dirt road up until six months ago. And the northern portion of that uh, had been also a, a dirt road um, and was only recently paved. Uh, but while this work has been ongoing, there have been um, development of regional impact, large commercial industrial development that has taken place in that area. Uh, in fact, at that intersection, there, there are two developments, uh, one on either side of um, the westerly leg of uh, Factory Shoals and um, one up the street. And um, so that entire area, the character has changed from a dirt gravel road um, residential area to an industrial uh, commercial area. And so this particular uh, intersection wasn't and isn't conducive to the additional traffic, particularly truck traffic that is now having to go through that intersection. And uh, ultimately, the South Sweetwater Master Plan uh, envisions that road 
um, to be uh, to be widened uh, Factory Shoals Road to a three-lane cross section, and that intersection to be improved. Uh, but until that time, till we're ready to do that, um, we would um, um, want to have at least four four-way stop control at, at that intersection approved. Okay. Thank you so much, Director Valentine. Any questions or additional comments from the board? All right. Okay, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be real quick because I will let Director Valentine go. Uh, previous question, I, I don't want this to fall on deaf ears regarding Riverside. And I'm sure you were in this meeting, I believe. Um, it, it, this, this, at least on the Riverside um, um, side of, of, of what we'll call a speed limit initiative, uh, it was a citizen that brought that forth. He lived in tributary, and I, I don't want to call him out, but it, it was important to, to acknowledge um, and, and that um, he, he he didn't feel me very well, uh, which which is okay, because I'm driving home the point that no, but his voice still mattered, and he brought that forward to us in January, and I remember we immediately um, Miguel we took it into committee, and we and I'm highlighting this point about interaction with citizens. No matter what you may think about the differences of each other, your voice does matter. It matters to this board. It, it, it mattered that important to sis, regardless of how you thought of me. That need was still important. The operational safety, my kids drive up and down that street, like everybody else's kids drive up that street and have to pull out there on that major thoroughfare. And then obviously to the Anawakians up the street who also had that concern about the school crossing. It's, I'm, I'm driving it full circle to say, no, it, 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 the citizens, your voice does matter. We do hear you. It's okay. We'll get beyond the moment. But at the same point, it's just, I, I, I've got to highlight that, like, no, remember that conversation now. But here we are. In other words, we overcame that moment. This is, no, it's good, though. I got you. And so, Madam Chair, I think this is important because this is a major initiative. This ain't, I know we sort of zipped through this. That is a major um, initiative to slow speed down. And all things that go into that um, impact in two major areas along that corridor. So that is a major project that came out of citizen input. And so we're driving home that this administration does hear citizens. You, you don't have to be like me. And so uh, I yield the floor on that, Matt. I just want to drive home that point. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? If not, I'm going to move on to tab number 23. Thank you so much, Director Valentin. Uh, it's authorizing to advertise for a public hearing for a new ordinance regarding hazardous pay. Hazard pay. Um, Attorney Bernard, are you on the phone? Or Attorney Bernard? I'm, I'm here, Madam Chair. I apologize. Okay. Took a minute to get the mic <laughs> right. Uh, this simply is a follow-up to the board's prior discussion regarding hazard pay, and we did not have anything on Douglas County books historically regarding same. So this is on the board's consideration for advertising, so it can be part of our code of ordinances that authorize during certain emergencies declared that hazardous pay could be awarded by this body. Uh, the main benefit to the county by having such a ordinance is that some uh, relief under COVID-19 and other type of emergencies requires you to have, have an advanced hazard to pay ordinance in place before the hazard. It's not come up before until it's COVID-19. So this is really a going forward thing. It doesn't stop the board from any time uh, awarding hazard pay but this will allow us hopefully to recoup some of it going forward. Uh, based on what I've heard in discussions with GEMA, FEMA and others, I'm not sure it will have any direct effect on any awards related to COVID, but any new emergency, it potentially would. Okay, thank you so much, Attorney Bernard. Any comments from the board? All right. Well, yes, thank I do. Yes. Uh -huh. this is, okay, thank you, Madam Chair. So hazard pay. So what do we, and this is only in emergency mode, if I heard you right. So this is not one of those where in order for people to come back to work, we're going to have a, across the board, we're going, there's, a, let's just say there's a protest for hazard pay. In other words, like come back, we're going to order everybody back. We got to pay this hazard pay. And so the difference between our normal operating budget 
and this new demand to get people to come back to work. Uh, we're saying that this, the state or the feds are going to pick this up. What, what am I listening to, Ken? I, okay. And I'm framing something. I want to make sure I understand what, 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 what I just heard. Please. Okay. This has nothing to do with any current award of hazard pay, and it has nothing to do with people coming back to work. There's no outright requirement that you ever award hazard pay. What this has to do with more is going forward, the county having something on the books that authorizes the award of hazard pay, because under certain FEMA and GEMA, and maybe some of those folks are on the line, uh, under FEMA and GEMA requirements for this COVID, for people that are being awarded hazardous pay to get it reimbursed, they're saying you had to already have a hazard pay ordinance on the books. So I think it was Commissioner Carthen during one of our meetings uh, asked that we develop a ordinance. It's still completely discretionary in the future when y'all award it, still requires a board vote, is not a requirement, is a condition of employment. Nobody has a right to hazard pay unless the board actually gives them hazard pay. This is more about the, the county's ability to recoup the money it does award in a future emergency because some requirements now are saying we won't give you a reimbursement on hazard pay award unless you already had an ordinance in play at the time of the emergency. So this is really more policy cleaning up for best practices going forward, but it does not limit this board in any manner. I just want to get the, the, the economic impact or implications that I might have perceived or not perceived. I'm good. Madam Chair, I yield. I'm good. Okay. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman. All right. Thank you so much, Attorney Bernardi. Any other comment from the board before I move on to the next items? Okay. We have the approval of expenses tomorrow, Board of Commissioners. I encourage you to look at your expenses and we will approve according, accordingly. And then we have two items, I believe, that uh, will be discussed in executive session, which is item 27 and 28. So uh, are there any other further comments from our Board of Commissioners before I call uh, for uh, executive session or request? Attorney Bernard, do we need to go into the executive session? We, we do, Madam Chair, for personnel and for litigation. Okay, uh, Mark, thank you. I Mark, I just want to verify for Mark. Mark, I don't believe there's any real estate matters. Is that correct? Yeah, Mark. that is correct. That's okay. correct. There is still one other discussion item that we may need to cover before executive session for Ron Roberts. Okay. Which which one is it, Lisa? Is it 27 or is it an additional item? It's the... Um, let me pull it back up here. It's number 27. Okay, okay. I just annexation. Okay, let me go on to we have one more attorney before I call for an executive session. It's tab number 27, which is the city annexation of parcel south of Arbor Place Mall. And I believe it's Ron Roberts uh, or Phil Schaefer is on, on the agenda. I've got it, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. So the uh, annexation came to us a couple of weeks back. It's 126 townhouse apartments located just south of the mall off Reservoir Drive. The uh, development itself represents a 12.89 dwelling units per acre on this property. And I just wanted to bring it to the attention of the board because a uh, Reservoir Drive portions of it will remain county zoned and therefore, uh, I didn't know if Director Valentine wanted to weigh in on the actual annexation issues in terms of what the county will still be required to do on Reservoir Drive and to make sure that the applicant for the city negotiates and discusses and, and comes to the county Department of Transportation for access management issues and gets the permits that allow him to enter this property. I want to make sure that we gave the Board of Commissioners a chance to weigh in on just the annexation as an issue in general. Of all the places you could put 13 units an acre, south of the Arbor Mall is probably the most ideal place you could stick that much density. We don't have anything comparable to that in the county at all right now, but it is quite dense and just wanted to make sure the Board was aware of it. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm in the middle of a meeting with the Board of Commissioners. Okay. Ken, could you mute yourself? Okay. Sorry about that. Keep going, Mr. Schaefer. Yeah, that, that I'm open for questions. Uh, we, we just uh, learned this morning that it was 126 units for the 12 acres or 100, yeah, 128 units for the 12 acres. And just to make sure the board knew that it was townhouse development. Okay. All right, any questions or comments from the board? Yes, yes, uh, ma'am. Commissioner Guider, this is your district. Yes, <laughs> as, <laughs> as is the mall. <laughs> yes, um, yes. <clears throat> I just uh, am concerned about Heritage Drive uh, field. Uh, that's a residential uh, small subdivision. And so they, the people there want to make sure that uh, the access to all these townhomes is not going to uh, encroach on their road, their little private, uh, it's, it's not a private road, but it's a, a like a cul-de-sac area. Right. And uh, they, they can't stand the thought of that much traffic co going in and out. Now, Reservoir Drive, uh, it goes out on the little road that goes back behind Arbor Station, However, um, and that would be ideal if they went that way, but there is a concern about uh, coming out and turning left on there. And, and so I, I hope that if the city, if this is approved and the city does annex this, that they uh, have a, a lot of uh, input from um, maybe even some of our county people as far as the traffic right there on that little small area. And there's little roads coming out in all different directions right there. And right. I, yes, you're, you're right. That that's why we, I, I, if, can you see my screen that I'm sharing? Yes. Okay. So heritage drive does not communicate with the property that is in question. The property in question is going to be surrounded by RLD right here. It, it only accesses Reservoir Drive. Mm -hmm. All the rest yeah. of Heritage Drive is well, developed. I, I, guess, uh, I think the people that are going to sell this property, they do have a, um, a house or access that is contiguous to the RLD. Okay. So, uh, and there's, there, it's been said in the past that they might want to use that as an exit or to a property once they sell it. So uh, it is. it may be a concern <clears throat> to the people that live on Heritage Drive and, and the little offshoots of the little cul-de-sac roads there. But um, just uh, coming off a res with the exit and uh, entry being uh, Reservoir Drive and it, connecting to the little small road that goes back behind the the mall. And then you've got all these other little side streets coming out also. It's going to be, uh, it may require a red light or something, but it's going to be a very dangerous pullout if there's not some uh, infrastructure put in there. I will, I will, if, if it's the board's desire, I will absolutely convey your concerns and the residents' concerns to the city council and to the director over there, Ms. Williams. I, I would like for you to, uh, you know, voice our, our concerns about it, especially for the residents there on uh, Heritage Drive, but also just the congestion that's going to, it's going to cause coming out on that little road without further infrastructure. Does that make sense? Maybe a, a different, another turn lane? Uh, uh, well, I, I think a, a yeah, red or on your behalf, well, on your behalf and on behalf of your, your constituents, what I would suggest that there be n no communication with Heritage Valley Drive at all, that the all the access be off, off Reservoir Drive. Well, I have been contacted with, by some people out on Heritage Drive, and <clears throat> what I'm saying is the people that are selling this piece, this large track of property, 
also owns a house at the end of Heritage Drive. Uh, and it was his idea at one point of having a connection to the larger track. You're correct. As I'm scanning okay. this one, when I do information, that is, it does communicate through. Okay. So we just want to protect the the subdivision there. Absolutely. That little road cannot handle that much traffic going in and out of there. So and, and we and, have just just to be clear, we have not seen a site plan from the city for this particular annexation, though that would have been quite helpful. But I don't know if we can put a contingency uh, on it or not. Just saying we would be uh, op opposed to access on Heritage Drive. I will, I, I will absolutely convey that to the city. Okay. All right. With that, I yield back, ma'am. All right. Thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. And thank you, Phil, for taking our concerns, or particular Commissioner Guider's uh, concerns, to uh, back to the city and the city council. And we, uh, and, and Phil, how, how soon do you think you can get a response for Commissioner Guider and also for me as well? I'm interested. I, I will have a letter prepared this afternoon. Okay, certainly we want to hear the voices of our of our citizens with regard. Chairman, to Chairman. Yes. Um, I, I do have a problem. question. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. I have a question for um, Director Schaefer. Can you also tell us how this will impact us? Because if we still have land in that area that the county is responsible for, uh, is how how are we going to divide that with the city? Because it seems like they want to annex everything, but we also, if you go annex it, we want you to pay for for what you are are doing. We don't want that to be on the backs of the of the county taxpayers. If you're going to take some, if you're going to annex property, correct. Um, and and I, my difficulty here was when we received the packet of information last week, they did not include the information on the development, and this has been an ongoing struggle with the city staff <laughs> attorney where we get the annexation only, we get the zoning district that they're requesting, but we do not get the details of the project. Um, this has been a problem. The, the issue blew up on Blair's Bridge with the commercial annexation last year of an, and, and then the construction of an 80,000 square foot building where Blair's Bridge is county maintained and Lynch Road is not. And so when they came to the county, they realized they had to come to the county for an access permit they couldn't get one because of some other issues with the sewer lines running through Blair's Bridge. So here again, we don't have enough information about what's being proposed so that I could give you or at least talk with Director Valentin to discuss what is the implications for uh, Reservoir Drive, because you're correct. There will be a segment of that road that is half in the county and half in the city. And when it's half and half, we have to have an intergovernmental agreement as to who maintains that road. And I honestly don't, I can defer to Director Valentin as to what, what the status of Reservoir Road is, because I don't know, but I would have preferred to be able to say, well, 128 units on 12 acres, that's a significant impact and there's gonna be maintenance ongoing for that road. So if that's part county and part city, what's the status in terms of the intergovernmental agreement for that roadway? Madam Chair, yes. Uh, can I can I jump in on that point, uh, Commissioner Carthen and the yeah. rest of the board? H yes. Here's my suggestion on this. My suggestion is there's too many unknowns not for us to go ahead and direct Phil to file an objection with with the state. While I will tell you the law is very uh, broadly favors cities ability to annex, what will happen in the process of us filing an objection is these kind of details will be brought forward and hopefully negotiated. I'm a little concerned because I don't know what the time frame is, Phil, and if you know the time frame, at some point in time, him writing a letter, them responding to it, the time for you to object is going to pass. So I would suggest that this board authorize Phil uh, to file an objection on behalf of the board and it, the details can get worked out during that process where essentially they bring folks together to try to work out some way for it to be approved by the state. Now, having said that, as Phil knows, the law is very 
broadly favorable to cities and the ability to annex. But it seems to me there's too many unknowns on this one just to rely on correspondence. I think it's going to fall through the gap if we're not careful. Yes. Thank yeah, you. The time, the time frame for 30 days is going to expire probably before we could get everything worked out. Right. Uh, Commissioner Carter. Madam Chair, I, I would, yeah, Madam Chair, what I would do is just, uh, with the board's permission, put under new business uh, and Phil can do the write up because I don't know the part, I don't have the parcel in front of me. But we get with Lisa Watts and put under new business, uh, authorize the chair and staff to file objection to that particular annexation, get it voted on, and Phil can get the objection out, and these details can be worked out during that process. That's what I would recommend. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if we want to take it all the way to the line of an objection. I believe we wanted just some more research, uh, county attorney, uh, and wanted Phil to bring some information back, particularly to, to Commissioner Carthen, I mean, not Carthen, but Commissioner uh, Guider. So if the board, I don't know what this board, I, you know, whatever the will of the board is, I would do, but I was just thinking we wanted some more research. Um, just needed some clarity. So if, could one of the board members weigh in and then we'll go on from there. Yeah, Madam Chair. Yes, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, again, I'm going to be, I'm always going to respect home rule for uh, obviously the district that this resides in, but there is a historical that we don't have to accept this. We can say no, we can object, and, and to Ken's point, they have authority to do what they do. The, the question becomes, is it worth that on this project? Right? Let, let's not let's not lean us one way or another. We can say no, and they can still move forward with their power as a municipality. Right? Let, let's not confuse the, the, the two worlds. Um, I'm, 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 I'm listening to see what my peers really, uh, to your point, is, is there a real issue here? Um, who's going to maintain? I mean, obviously, at some point, we're going to get into service delivery and all that stuff. And I, 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 this is just a precursor to the capacity to be able to like, no, don't, no, don't give away your power now. This is a precursor to that, like, okay, who does what? Right? So you're going to drop this on us, and what, what's that impact going to be on us? You shotgunning this? You have to pay attention to the process. You got to know what we, what you're looking at with this. And so um, to my board, again, I'm with my peers. However y'all want to handle that, y'all know I am very comfortable with a no, recognizing I respect their power as well. This is not an issue, but we, we do have the right to understand, okay, but what's about to go here? Especially if we have to now incur something, the residual back on Chapel Hill, which we now own, or wherever this is going to come out at. Again, those you guys are closer to this than I am, so uh, I, I can't call it, but I'll back you 100%. Madam Chair, I yield. That's it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. And uh, Commissioner uh, Guider, certainly want to hear your, your stance, and then we can move forward with. Well, uh, my suggestion would make, make it imperative that they take over that entire road. Uh, you know, that be annexed to. Um, but uh, we just need to watch this very closely because uh, of the traffic problem it's going to cause. But uh, there's going to have to be some infrastructure added out there on that little uh, connector road that runs behind the mall. Uh, that road is not... Uh, big enough. It, <laughs> it's only a two-lane road, except for a little turn lane, but uh, it's a very dangerous area because people are, kind of, there's a hill there, very steep hill, <clears throat> and it's hard to see coming out of some of the other roads there, so we just need to uh, make sure that there's some infrastructure put there. Red light, I, I think it's going to have to be a red light, to be honest. But I do uh, think that the city should take the entire reservoir road or street over with this. That's just my recommendation. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner. Board of Commissioners, what we'll do, it sounds like it's a consensus right now because we wanted some other um, things added to this uh, proposal from the city. And uh, certainly, um, Schaefer, Phil, if you would just certainly just take that back to the city as well. Uh, right now, um, with the objection, certainly, and that gives them latitude to um, give us some more information and state the concerns that Commissioner Guider has just um, run past his board, and then we'll go from there. Okay? Madam, Madam Chair, can I just clarify? 
Yes. It's one thing for Phil to write a letter to the city asking about his concerns. It's another thing to file a timely objection. What I think I heard Phil say is the time for filing a timely objection with the state will run before y'all meet again. Are you simply wanting him to inquire and just leave it because the time's going to run? Or are we going to file an objection and get it worked out during the settlement conference where they bring all these issues forefront and try to work it out? I, I prefer him to send a letter. I think that would just be a, a way so we can certainly I think all of us are in, agree in agreement we want to move the, the county and the city forward. So okay. Just so, please, there, please, so we're not filing right. an objection. We're just simply letting right. the city know our concerns. Our concerns, yes. All right. Board Madam Commission. Chair, I don't, I don't agree. I, I do have to express that I don't agree. I think we should, just to protect ourselves, file that objection and allow them to come back. Because if we don't, and then we find out that it really is... Um, it's on us and that they annex it. And then this property owner starts doing and digging and then they're going to come back to us asking us, well, can you maintain this? Well, can you do that? I, I think, I think we protect ourselves if we go the route that attorney Bernard just stated. Um, and, and it's just in good keeping with making sure that we protect ourselves. So um, I just wanted to voice that, that I think we should file the objection. It, is it all right? I, I'll make one comment to Commissioner Carthen. The, the issue of protecting ourselves still falls on the Board of Commissioners. You do still have an access permit issue off of Heritage Drive, Valley Drive because that is still in the county. And therefore, mm -hmm. Director Valentin would get the ability to say, no, we don't believe this should communicate through this subdivision that is still out in the county. So the issue would fall back on the city to have an arrangement with the county on Reservoir Drive as the only in and out for this 128 unit development, rather than allow this owner to come through his single family residential property in the subdivision. To do that, to take that lot in that subdivision and run a road through it is gonna require them to, to discuss access management with our DOT. And, I, and Director Valentin can weigh in if he wishes, but I believe he has absolute authority to say yeah or no, yes or no at the moment they come through for development review, because they would still have to go through our DRC process if, in fact, they do wish to access back through the county. Uh, Madam Chair, this is this is Miguel. Uh, if I may comment on on this item, uh, I think. All of the concerns that have been expressed are very valid. Uh, typically, if we were looking at a site plan of that density in the county, we would be looking at infrastructure improvements within the roadway immediately in front of the subdivision and at an intersection with another road down the street. So uh, in this particular case, if the county has part of the road, then the infrastructure improvements at the intersection would fall on the county. And we would not have the ability to um, put that back on the city. Uh, so the, the, that is a legitimate concern that whatever improvements are uh, associated with mitigating the impact of the development should be borne by uh, whoever has jurisdiction on the road, in, and in this particular case, unless the uh, the jurisdiction of the road is negotiated or made a condition of uh, the annexation, then it would fall uh, certainly on the county. The other item that uh, that Phil mentioned about the connectivity to Heritage Drive, uh, certainly a site plan would come back to the county, and we would have the ability at the DOT to look at it and make uh, recommendations as it relates or deny uh, as it relates to that access. Uh, however, something of this significance, uh, it could be that uh, a subdivision that dense can only uh, be done if it has multiple access points unless there is infrastructure improvements done on, on the main access road. So, um, so th those two items, if it came back to the county DOT for review after the fact, 
uh, we certainly would uh, review it and make comments about the the feasibility or uh, the wisdom of, of that connectivity. Uh, certainly, they would uh, have a discussion with the board at that time as well. Okay. So you sound, uh, what I can hear from uh, you, uh, you're just, what you just said, um, Director Valentin, is certainly we have some leverage. I guess when the document comes back to you, you have an opportunity to weigh in and determine which way we go at that time. Is that what I heard? I want to make sure. Well, certainly we will have the opportunity to do that, but we will not be in the same position. Uh, I, I think that uh, if, if the objection is filed, then we we have uh, certainly a lot more leverage to have uh, discussions with them. Okay. All right. Well, sounds like a consensus. Commissioner Carthen, I know what you're... You, yes. Commissioner Guider? Yes. Um, Miguel, I, I'm thinking that we should require them, or uh, if... I don't want to turn the project down because it is uh, uh, something that uh, you know that we've talked about this. We need uh, more housing, uh, lower income housing, and stuff like that. But we we've got to um, require them to take over Reservoir Drive. Uh, in its entirety, because we don't want to have to fund the entry to this. If it's going to be in the city, it should be on them. And if we could stipulate in the um, negotiation or whatever that we that that we require them to take over that road uh, in its entirety, in any infrastructure that's going to be required. So, uh, I don't. I don't like the fact that we may end up paying for a road that is just going to benefit the city. So. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm sorry, Commissioner. I, I didn't mean to cut you off, but, but, uh, uh, yeah. To your point, those those requirements. Uh, we could not impose those requirements on the development unless it was within our jurisdiction. So uh, it, it would seem that uh, with those concerns, um, filing an objection and then trying to negotiate would be uh, the way to, to uh, potentially have some discussion about that. Otherwise, the entire property would be in the city and uh, we would have the jurisdiction on a section of the road uh, with no ability to enforce improvements on <clears throat> Is it imperative that we use that road, make them cut their own road? We could just close that road as, as it is in the county. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want us to have to pay for something uh, this large and this expensive because we don't know what kind of infrastructure is going to be required out on that little service road back behind the uh, mall. And uh, that could run into big bucks that we don't have. And so I just uh, think they either take the road or we just close the road and let them build their own road. We could kind of twist the arm, I guess you'd say. Uh, Commissioner, that's that's a different discussion, uh, <laughs> okay. certainly. But uh, but I, I think that the the avenue available to the county to to file the objection and then have a discussion about our concerns uh, certainly is a viable one. But but I I know from the past that the annexation laws favor the municipalities very much. So uh, they allowed uh, annexation of Thornton Road by going down on a pipeline. So um, I'm just saying that um, we need to push this uh, very um, strongly just because we may end up paying for something uh, that is mostly a benefit for the city. And with that, I yield back. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. So with that being said, I, I do hear two things strongly uh, move forward with an objection and then Commissioner uh, Guy, I heard that you sound like you just really want to continue to work and uh, negotiate along the sides because either way, it sounds like the municipality will um, have the ability to move forward. So at this point, I'm at the will of the board. So what is the will? 
and I heard you loud and clear, Commissioner Carthen, but I'm trying to yield to Commissioner Guider. It's her district. Commissioner Guider? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm yielding to I, you. I, I may need to talk with, uh, let Ken um, hone in on this because uh, we can neither uh, oppose it and then we we end up fighting with the city about it. Or right. I don't know if we go any uh, say we don't oppose it, but we do require these stipulations upon acceptance. Well, let, let me can I weigh in, Madam Commissioner, to that point? Uh, listen, when you file, I think that maybe there there might be a little bit of a false premise. Filing an objection does not mean the project is going to be canceled or the annexation won't happen. Filing the objection starts a procedural administrative process where the county's concerns are addressed in a formal way to iron out all these concerns we have. And then there may be an agreement that just simply ends the objection and we move forward, or it may be they get it without addressing some of our concerns. It's not a legal uh, it's not litigation. We're not doing an injunction to stop the city. We're just simply protecting our right for these interests that have been raised and the process will air these out. And actually the process may be helpful to the city because it sounds like some things that have been said today in this meeting will be brought to light that may be a concern of theirs because they got to get phone calls too when that corridor has, if they have issues with traffic. So I'm just suggesting file the objection. It can be withdrawn later if need be. It'll give us an opportunity during the administrative process of review to work it out with the city and DCA so they can move forward and some of these concerns can be addressed. That, that, that would be my suggestion. Okay. And I would go along with that. Okay. Thank you, uh, Attorney Bernard, and thank you, um, Commissioner Guider, and thank you, uh, Attorney Bernard, for the clarity. We're going to move forward with an objection, and, and certainly we'll wait on some responses, and then that gives us opportunity to, to uh, gain some clarity on some of those concerns. Perfect. All right. That can, uh, Phil, well, Phil's, Phil, Phil, will you get with Lisa Watson about how that needs to be worked on the agenda for tomorrow, please? You bet. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All thank right. You. Board of Commissioners, now we are moving to the moment of an executive session. Um, Attorney Bernard has just announced that we do, do need to go into executive session. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please indicate by saying your name. Ramona Jackson Jones, yes. Kelly Robinson, yes. Commissioner And Jones Goddard, yes. Terania Carthen, yes. Okay, we have a 5 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Okay, we will sign off and uh, Mark, you will call us back, correct? No. Yes, ma'am. Just keep your Microsoft Teams on and I'll call you back. Okay, thank you. So we, we sign off? Yeah, well, no, you don't sign off. You just... Yes, sir, you, you hang up and Mark will call yeah, you back. Up. Yes, he's going to call you back. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, TJ. Uh, Board of Commissioners, we've had a very productive meeting today. We had quite a robust uh, uh, agenda, but we covered quite a bit of good material and we've made some great progress today. Uh, you have any other comments, Board of Commissioners? I just always like to close and do with a statement to the citizens. Okay, with that being said, I want to just make it clear and also public that our uh, in-person meetings will resume on July 20th, Board of Commissioners. That'll be our work session, and then the 21st uh, would be our Board of Commissioners meeting. So we're planning to do that. We will meet uh, for both meetings in uh, Citizens Hall because we need that social distancing component in place. We will make sure that our uh, cabinet is not sitting up at the top level with us. We will have them sitting at a table so we everybody can spread out. So just want to make you aware of that. Right now, we, we will start meeting back in person on, person on July 20th. 
However, if the governor's orders Uh, and also cleaning your hands and also um, those things that are relative to COVID-19. COVID-19 is still active and I know we are moving into our third month, but it's, it's very easy to forget where we are. And I just wanted to just say that we're still active in COVID-19. And I do have some stats available for our citizens to kind of give you an idea of where we are today. Today we have five 57,681 confirmed COVID cases in Georgia, which 655 of those cases are confirmed here in Douglas County. We have 9,200, uh, we have 2,451 deaths and 28 of those deaths are associated with Douglas County. We have 9,248 hospitalizations, or should I say previous hospitalizations. And uh, Douglas County, we had uh, 147 were related to Douglas County. And total uh, uh, ICU, which is intensive care unit uh, admissions, was 2,034 for the entire state. I want to remind again our citizens to continue to be aware because we are still fighting this invisible virus and we need to remain disciplined and disciplined and diligent as we go forward. So uh, masks are highly recommended. If you're out and about, I was in the community this weekend and noticed that it was about maybe 60 to 70 percent of uh, our citizens wearing masks and certainly it's highly recommended. We cannot make you do anything. That's your First Amendment right. But certainly uh, just wanted to encourage you from a healthcare perspective and because of my knowledge and background, if you could protect yourself and others. Also, hand washing is critical as we go forward. Continue to wash your hands. And uh, uh, Commissioner Mitchell had a birthday uh, background earlier, and I wanted you to just remember the birthday song. Just continue to think about the birthday celebration song when you wash your hands. And also, your uh, social distancing is very important. We want to continue to do that. We call it physical distancing because we all like to be social. And the virtual, uh, I just encourage you to continue to use your virtual technology um, because again, I, as I said earlier, this too shall pass, but we're still in the midst of trying to get over the, I, took, I call it, we're trying to get over the 50 yard line and we're just not there yet. Also, last but not least, if you could continue your disinfection and your sanitation of surfaces within your homes, your keyboards, your telephones, and in the office in this moment. With that being said, Board of Commissioners, if it's nothing else, I would certainly, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much.